Good evening. Welcome to week 32 of Plaguespear and Company. Tonight, we're pleased to bring you Shakespeare's tragedy of Othello, a story not only about revenge of a man who feels he was wrong, but also of the dangerous and insidious power of jealousy. Tonight's play contains one of Shakespeare's most iconic lines, oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. So grab your popcorn, a tasty beverage, sit back and relax and enjoy Othello. Tosh, never tell me. I take it much unkindly that thou, Iago, who hast had my purse as if the strings were thine, shouldst know of this. Subplot, but you'll not hear me. If ever I did dream of such a matter, abhor me. Thou told me thou didst hold him in thy hate. Despise me if I do not. Three great ones of the city in personal suit to make me his lieutenant, off captain to me. And by the faith of man, I know my price. I am worth no worse a place. But he, as loving his own pride and purposes, evades them with a bombast circumstance horribly stuffed with epitaphs of war, and in conclusion, non-suits my mediators for, certes, he sa says he, I have already chose my officer. And what was he? Forsooth, a great arithmetician, one Michael Cassio, a Florentine, a fellow most damned in a fair wife, that never set a squadron in the field, nor the, the division of a battle knows more than a spinster. Unless the bookish theoric, which in the Togue councils can propose as masterly as he, Mere prattle without practice is all his soldiership. But he, sir, had the election, and I, of whom his eyes had seen the proof at Rhodes, at Cyprus, and on other grounds christened and heathen, must be bleed and gone by a debitor and creditor, this counter, caster, he in good time must mark, must his lieutenant be, and I, God bless the mark, his moorships. Ancient. By heaven, I had rather would have been his hangman. Why, <laughs> there's no remedy. Tis the curse of service. Preferment goes by letter and affection and not by old graduation where each second stood heir to the first. Now, sir, be judge yourself whether I in any just term am thinned to love the more. I would not follow him then. Oh, sir, content you. I follow him to serve my turn upon him. We cannot all be masters, nor all masters cannot be truly followed. You shall mark many a duteous and knee-crooking knave that, doting on his own obsequious bondage, wears out his time, much like his master's ass, for naught but provender and when he's old cashiered. <laughs> With me such honest knaves, others there are who trimmed in forms of, and visages of duty, keep yet their hearts attending on themselves and throwing but shows of service on their lords do well thrive by them. And when they have lined their coats, do themselves homage. These fellows have some soul and such a one I do, do I profess myself. For sir, it is as sure as you are Roderigo, were I the more, I would not be Iago. And following him, I follow but myself. Heaven is my judge, not I for love and duty, but seeming so for my peculiar end. For when my outward action doth demonstrate the native act and figure of my heart in compliment extern, tis not long after, but I will wear my heart upon my sleeve for Dawes to peck at. I am not what I am. What a full fortune does the thick lips owe if he can carry it thus. Call up her father. 
rouse him, make after him, poison his delight, proclaim him in the streets, and censor kinsmen. And though he in a fertile climate dwell, plague him with flies. Though that his joy be joy, yet throw such changes of vexation on it as it may lose some color. Here is his, her father's house. I'll call aloud. Do with like timorous accent and dire yell as when by night and negligence the fire is spied in populous cities. What ho, Brabantio, Signor Brabantio, ho! Awake! What ho, Brabantio, ho! Thieves, thieves, look to your house, your daughter, and your bags, thieves, thieves! The reason of this terrible summons, what is the matter here? Senor, is all your family within? Are your doors locked? Why? Wherefore ask you this? Son, sir, you are robbed for, for shame. Put on your gown, your heart is burst. You have lost half your soul. Even now, now, there you go. An old black ram is tupping your wife, you. Arise, arise, awake the snorting citizens with the bell or else the devil will make a grandsire of you. Arise, I say. What, what, have you lost your wits? Most reverend senor, do you know my voice? Not I, what are you? My name is Rodrigo. Oh, the worse are welcome. I have charged thee not to haunt about my doors. In honest plainness, thou hast heard me say, my daughter is not for thee. And now in madness, being full of supper and distempering drafts, upon malicious bravery, dost thou come to start my quiet. Sir, sir, now, But sir. thou must needs be sure my spirits and my place have in their power to make this bitter for thee. Patience, good sir. What tells me thou of robbing? This is Venice. My house is not a grange. Most grave, Brabantio. In simple and pure soul, I come to you. Soon, sir, you are one of those that will not serve God if the devil bid you, because we come to do you service. And, and you think we are ruffians. You'll have your daughter covered with a Barbary horse. You'll have your nephews named to you. You'll have coursers for cousins and Jeanette's for Germans. What profane wretch art thou? I am one, sir, that comes to tell you your daughter and the moor are now making the beast with two backs. Thou art a villain. You are a senator. This thou shalt answer. I know thee, Rodrigo. Sir, I will answer anything. But I beseech you, if it be your pleasure and most wise consent, as I partly find it is, that your fair daughter at this odd, even, and dull watch of the night, transported with no worse nor better guard, but with a knave of common hire, a gondolier to the gross clasps of a lascivious moor. If this be known to you and your allowance, we then have done you bold and saucy wrongs. But if you know not this, my manners tell me we have your wrong rebuke. Do not believe that from all the sense of civility, I thus would play and trifle with your reverence. Your daughter, if you have not given her leave, I say again, hath made a gross revolt. Tying her duty, beauty, wit, and fortunes in an extravagant and wheeling stranger of here and everywhere. Straight, satisfy yourself. If she be in your chamber or your house, let loose on me the justice of the state for thus deluding you. Strike on the tinder. Oh, give me a taper. Call up my people. This accident is not unlike my dream. Belief of it oppresses me already. Light, I say, light. Farewell, for I must leave you. It seems not meet nor wholesome to my place to be produced as if I stay, I shall, against the moor, for I do know the state 
<laughs> However, this may gall him with some cheek, cannot with safety cast him, for he's embarked with such loud reason to the Cyprus wars, which now, even now, stands in act that for with their souls, uh, another fathom, uh, another of his fathom, they have none to lead their business. In which regard, though I do hate him as I do hell pains, yet for necessity of present life, I must show out a flag and sign of love, which is indeed but sign, that you shall surely find him, lead to the sagittary, the raised search, and there will I be with him. So farewell. It is too true and evil. Gone she is, and what's to come of my despised time is naught but bitterness. Now, Rodrigo, where didst thou see her? Oh, unhappy girl. With the moor, sayest thou, who would be a father? How didst thou know t'was she? Oh, she deceives me past thought. What said she to you? Get more tapers. Raise all my kindred. Are they married, think you? Ah, uh, truly, I think they are. Oh, heaven! How got she out? Oh, treason of the blood. Fathers from hence, trust not your daughters' minds by what you see them act. Is not their charms by which the property of youth and maidenhood may be abused? Have you not read, Rodrigo, of some such thing? Uh, yes, sir, I have indeed. Call up, my brother. Oh, would you had had her, some one way or, or some another. Do you know where we may apprehend her in the moor? I think I can discover him, if you please to get good guard and go along with me. I pray you, lead on. At every house I'll call, I command it most. Get weapons, ho! Raise some special officers of the night. On, good Rodrigo. I will deserve your pains. <clears throat> Though in the trade of war, I have slain men, yet do I hold it very stuff of the conscience to do no contrived murder. I like iniquity some time to do me service. Nine or ten times I had thought to have yurked him here under the ribs. <laughs> Tis better as it is. Hey, <laughs> but he prated and spoke such scurvy and provoking terms against your honor that with the little <laughs> godliness I have, I did full hard forbear him. But I pray you, sir, are you fast married? Be assured of this, that the Magnifico is much beloved and hath in his effect a voice potential as double as the Duke's. He will divorce you or put upon you what restraint or grievance the law with all his might to enforce it on will give him cable. Let him do his spite. My services which I have done the signori shall out tongue his, shall out -tongue his complaints. Because yet to know, which when I know that boasting is an honor, I shall promulgate I fetch my life and being from men of royal siege, and my demerits may speak unbonneted as to, uh, to as proud a fortune as this that I have reached. For no, Iago, but that I love the gentle Desdemona. I would not my unhoused freedom can free condition put into circumscription and confined for the sea's worth. But look, what likes come young? Those are the raised father and his friends. You were best go in. Not I. I must be found. My parts, my title, and my perfect soul shall manifest me rightly. Is it they? By Janice, I think so. The servants of the Duke and my lieutenant. The goodness of the night upon you, friends. What is the news? The Duke does greet you, General, and he requires your haste, post-haste appearance, even on the instant. What is the matter, you think? Something from Cyprus, as I may divine. It is the business of some heat. The galleys have sent a dozen sequent messengers this very night at another's heels, and many of the council raised and met are at the Duke's already. You have been hotly called for. When being not at your lodging to be found, the Senate hath sent three several quests to search you out. Tis well I am found by you. I will but spend a word here in the house and go with you. Ancient, what makes you he what makes he here? Faith he tonight hath boarded a land carack. If it prove lawful prize, he's made forever. I do not understand. 
He's married. To who? Married to. Come, Captain, will you go? I have with you. He comes another troop to seek for you. Ah, it is Brabantio. General, be advised, he comes to bad intent. Oh, stand there. Senor, it is the Moor. Down with him, thief! You, Roderigo, c- come, sir, I am for you. Keep your, up your bright swords, for the dew will rust them. Good senor, you shall more command with ears than with your weapons. Oh, the foul thief, where hast thou stowed my daughter? Damned as thou art, thou hast enchanted her, for I'll refer me to all things of sense. If she in chains of magic were not bound, whether a maid so tender, fair, and happy, so opposite to marriage that she shunned the wealthy curled darlings of our nation, would have ever have to incur a general mock, run from her guardage to the sooty bosom of such a thing as thou, to fear, not to delight. Judge me the world, if tis not gross in in sense that thou hast practiced on her with foul charms, abused her delicate youth with drugs or minerals that weakens motion, I'll have disputed on. Tis probable and palpable to thinking. I therefore apprehend thee and do attach thee for an abuser of the world, a practicer of arts inhibited and out of warrant. Lay hold upon him. If he do resist, subdue him at his peril. Hold your hands, both of you of mine and including the rest. Were it my cue to fight, I should have known it without a prompter. Whither will you that I go to answer this your charge? To prison, till fit time of law and discourse of direct session call thee to answer. And what if I do obey? How may the duke be therewith satisfied whose messengers are here about my side upon some present business of the state to bring me to him? Tis true, most worthy senor. The duke's in council and your noble self, I am sure, is sent for. Oh, the duke in council, in this time of night, bring him away. Mine's not an idle cause the duke himself or any of my brothers of the state cannot but feel this wrong as twere their own. For if such actions may have passage free, bond slaves and pagans shall our be. There's no composition in these news that gives them credit. Indeed, they are disproportioned. My letters say 107 galleys. And mine, 140. And mine, 200. But though they jump not on a just a comp, as in these cases where uh, the AIM report is off with the difference, yet do they all confirm a Turkish fleet and bearing up to Cyprus? Nay, it is possible enough to judgment. I do not so secure me in the error, but the main article I do approve in fearful sense. What ho, what ho, what ho! A messenger from the galleys. Now, what's the business? The Turkish preparation makes for road, so was I bid here to the state by Signor Angelo. How say you by this change? This cannot be by no assay of reason. Tis a pageant to keep us in false gaze. When we consider the importancy of Cyprus to the Turk and let ourselves again but understand that as it more concerns the Turk than Rhodes, so may he with more facile question bear it. For that it stands not in such a warlike brace, but altogether lacks the abilities that Rhodes is dressed in. If we make thought of this, we must, we must not think the Turk is so unskillful to leave the latest which concerns him first, neglecting an attempt of ease and gain to wake and wage a danger profitless. Nay, in all confidence, he's not for Rhodes. Here is more news. The Ottomites, reverend and gracious, steering with due course toward the Isle of Rhodes, have there enjoined them with an afterfleet. Aye, so I thought. How many, as you guess? Of thirty sail. Now they do rest in their backward course, bearing with frank appearance their purposes toward Cyprus. Signor Montano, your trusty and most valiant servitor, with his free duty recommends you thus and prays you to believe him. Tis certain then for Cyprus. Marcus Lucius, is not he in town? He's now in Florence. Write from us to him post post haste. Dispatch. Here comes Barbancio and the valiant Moor. Valiant Othello, we must straight employ you against the general army Ottoman. I did not see you. Welcome, Signor. We lacked your counsel and your help tonight. So did I yours. 
Good your grace, pardon me. Neither my place nor aught I heard of business hath raised me from my bed, nor doth the general care take hold on me. For my particular grief is of so floodgate and o'erbearing nature that it ingluts and swallows other sorrows, and it is still itself. Why? What's the matter? My daughter. Oh, my daughter. Dead? Aye, to me, she is abused, stolen from me, and corrupted by spells and medicines brought of mountebanks. For nature so preposterously to err, being not deficient, blind, or lame of sense, sans witchcraft could not. Who e'er he be that in this foul proceeding hath thus beguiled your daughter of herself, and you of her? The bloody book of law you shall yourself read in the bitter letter after your own sense, yea, though our proper son stood in your action. Humbly, I thank your grace. Here is the man. This Moor, whom now it seems your special mandate for the state affairs hath hither sought. Uh, we are very sorry for it. What in your own part can you say to this? Nothing, but this is so. Most pa patient, potent, grave and reverend seniors, my very noble and approved good masters, that I have taken away this man's daughter, tis most true. True that I have married her. The very head and front of my offending hath this extent no more. <clears throat> Rude am I in speech, and little blessed with the soft phrases of peace. For since these arms of mine had seven years pith till now, some nine moons wasted, they have used their dearest action in the tented field, and little of this great world can speak more than pertains to feats of broils and battle. And therefore little shall I grace my cause in speaking for myself. It, yet, by your gracious patience, I will a round, unvarnished tale deliver of my whole course of love. What drugs, what charms, what conjuration, and what mighty magic for such proceedings I am charged with all. I won his daughter. A maiden, never bold, of spirit so still and quiet that her motion blushed at its herself. And she, in spite of nature, of uh, years, of country, credit, every thing, to fall in love with what she feared to look on? It is a judgment maimed and most imperfect that will confess perfection so could err against all rules of nature and must be driven to find out practices of cunning hell why this should be. Therefore, I will avouch again that with some mixtures powerful o'er the blood, or with some dram conjured to this effect, he wrought upon her. To vouch this is no proof, without more wider and more overt test than these thin habits and poor likelihoods of modern seeming do prefer against him. But, Othello, speak. Did you by indirect and forced courses subdue and poison this young maid's affections? Or came it by request, and such fair question as soul to soul affordeth? I do beseech you, send for the lady to the Sagittary, and let her speak of me before her father. If you do find me foul in her report, the trust, the office I do hold of you, not only take away, but let your sentence even fall upon my life. Fetch Desdemona hither. And, oh, ancient, conduct them. And you best know the place. Until she come, as truly as to heaven, I do confess my vices of my blood so justly to your grave ears, I'll present how I did thrive in this fair lady's love and she in mine. Say it, Othello. <clears throat> Her father loved me, oft invited me, still questioned me the story of my life from year to year the battles, sieges, fortunes that I have passed. I ran it through, even from my boyish days to the very moment that he bade me tell it, wherein I spoke of most disastrous chances, of moving accidents by flood and field, of hairbreadth scapes in the imminent deadly breach, of being taken by the insolent foe and sold to slavery, of my redemption thence and portents in my travels history, wherein of Antes vast and deserts idle, rough quarries, rocks, and hills, whose heads touch heaven, it was my hint to speak. Such was my process. And of the cannibals that each other eat, 
the anthropophagi and men whose heads do grow beneath their shoulders these things to hear would Desdemona seriously incline. But still, the house affairs would draw her hence, which ever as she could with haste dispatch, she'd come again, and with a greedy ear, devour of my discourse. Which I, observing, took one pliant hour and found good means to draw from her a prayer of earnest heart that I would all my pilgrimage dilate, whereof by parcels she had something heard, but not intentively. I did consent, and often did beguile of her tears when I did speak of some disastrous stroke that my youth suffered. My story being done, she gave me for my pains a world of sighs. She swore in faith. Twas strange, twas passing strange, twas pitiful, twas wondrous pitiful. She wished she had not heard it, yet she wished that heaven had made her such a man. She thanked me and bade me if I had a friend that loved her, I should but teach him how to tell my story and that would woo her. Upon this hint I spake, she loved me for the dangers I had passed, and I loved her that she did pity them. This only is the witchcraft I have used. Here comes the lady, let her witness it. I think this tale would win my daughter too, good Barbantio. Take up this mangled matter at the best. Men do their broken weapons rather use than their bare hands. I pray you, hear her speak. If she confessed that she was half the wooer, destruction on my head, if my bad blame light on the man. Come hither, gentle mistress. Do you perceive in the, all this noble company where most you owe obedience? My noble father, I do perceive here a divided duty. To you, I am bound for life and education. My life and education both do learn me how to respect you. You are the Lord of Duty. I am hitherto your daughter. But here's my husband. And so much duty as my mother showed to you, preferring you before her father, so much I challenge that I may profess due to the more, my Lord. I'll be with you. I have done. Please it your grace on to the state affairs. I'd rather to adopt a child than get it. Come hither, more. Here I do give thee that with all my heart, which but thou hast already, with all my heart I would keep from thee. For your sake, jewel, I am glad at soul I have no other child, for thy escape would teach me tyranny to hang clogs on them. I have done, my lord. Let me speak like yourself, and lay a sentence which as agrees or step may help these lovers into your favor. When remedies are past, the griefs are ended by seeing the worst which laid upon hopes depended. To mourn a mischief that is past and gone is the next way to draw new mischief on. What cannot be preserved when fortune takes patience, her injury a mockery makes. The robbed that smiles steals something from the thief. He robs himself that spends a bootless grief. So let the Turk of Cyprus us beguile. We lose it not, so long as we can smile. He bears the sentence well that nothing bears, but the free comfort from thence he hears. But he bears both the sentence and the sorrow, that to pay the grief must of poor patience borrow. These sentences to sugar or to gall being strong on both sides are equivocal. But words are words. I never yet did hear that the bruised heart was pierced through the ear. I humbly beseech you to proceed to the affairs of state. The Turk, with a most mighty preparation, makes for Cyprus. Othello, the fortitude of the place is best known to you. And though we have there a substitute of most allowed sufficiency, yet opinion, a sovereign mistress of effects, throws a more safer voice on you. You must therefore be content to slubber the gloss of your new fortunes with this more stubborn and boisterous expedition. The tyrant custom my most grave senators have made the flinty and steel couch of war my thrice-driven bed of down. 
I do agonize a natural and prompt alacrity I find in hardness, and do undertake the present wars against the Ottomites. Most humbly, therefore, begging to your spending to your state, I crave fit disposition for my wife. Do you reference and place of exhibition with such accommodation and the sort as levels with her breeding? If you please, be it at her father's. I will not have it so. Nor I. Nor I. I would not there reside to put my father in impatient thoughts by being in his eye. Most gracious Duke, to my unfolding lend your prosperous ear and let me find a charter in your voice to assist my simpleness. What would you, Desdemona? That I did love the more to live with him. My downright violence and storm of fortunes may trumpet to the world, my heart subdued even to the very quality of my lord. I saw Othello's visage in his mind, and to his honors and his valiant parts did I my soul and fortunes consecrate. So that, dear lords, if I be left behind a moth of peace and he go to the war, the rights for why I love him are bereft me. And I, a heavy interim, shall support by his dear absence. Let me go with him. Let her have your voice. Vouch with me, heaven. I therefore beg it not to please the palate of my appetite, nor to comply with heat, the young effects in me defunct, and proper satisfaction, but to be free and bounteous to her mind. And heaven defend your good souls that you think I will your serious and great business scant for she is with me. No, oh, when light-winged toys of feathered Cupid's seal are with wanton dullness my speculative and orifice instruments, that my disports corrupt and taint my business. Let housewives make a skillet of my helm and all in thine base adversities make head against my estimation. Be it as you shall privately determine, either for her stay or going, the affairs cries haste and speed must answer it. You must away tonight. Tonight, my lord. This night. With all my heart. At nine in the morning, here we'll meet again. Othello, leave some officer behind, and he shall our commission bring to you, and such things else of quality and respect as doth import you. So please, your grace, my ancient, a man he is of honesty and trust. To his conveyance I assign my wife, with what else needful your good grace shall think to be sent after me. Let it be so. Good night to everyone. And noble signor, if virtue no delighted beauty lack, your son-in-law is far more fair than black. Hmm. Adieu, brave Moor. Use Desdemona well. Look to her, Moor, if thou hast eyes to see. She has deceived her father, and may thee my life upon her faith. Honest Diago, my Desdemona must I leave to thee. I pray thee let thy wife attend on her and bring them after in the best advantage. Come Desdemona, I have but an hour of love, of worldly matter and direction to spend with thee. We must obey the time. Diago. What sayest thou, noble heart? What will I do, think so? Why, go to bed and sleep? I will incontinently drown myself. <laughs> if thou dost, I shall never love thee after. Why, thou silly gentleman. It is silliness to live when there's a torment. And then we have a prescription to die when death is our physician. Yes, I have looked upon the world for four times seven years, and since I could distinguish betwixt a benefit and an injury, I never found man that knew how to love himself. Or I would say I would drown myself for the love of a guinea hen. I would change my humanity with a baboon. What should I do? I confess it is my shame to be so fond, but it's not in my virtue to amend it. Virtue? A fig! Tis in ourselves that 
we are thus or thus. Our bodies are our gardens to the which our wills are gardeners. So that if we will plant nettles or sow lettuce, set hyssop and weed up thyme, supply it with one gender of herbs or distract it with many, either to have it sterile with idleness or manured with industry. Why the power and corrigible authority of this lies in our wills. If the beam of our lives had not one scale of reason to poise another of sensuality, the blood and baseness of our natures would conduct us to the most preposterous conclusions. But we have reason to cool our raging motions, our carnal stings, our unbitted lusts. Where have I take this that you call love? to be a sect or scion. It cannot be. It is merely a lust of the blood oh. and a permission of the will. Ah. Huh, be a man, drown thyself, drown cats and blind puppies. I have professed me thy friend and I confess, me knit to thy deserving with cables of perdurable toughness. I could never better stead thee than now. Put money in thy purse, follow the wars, defeat thy favor with an unsurfeared. But I say, put money in thy purse. It cannot be long that Desdemona should continue her love to the more. Put money in thy purse, nor his. He, his to her. It was a violent commencement in her. And thou shalt see an, an answerable sequestration. Put but money in thy purse. These moors are changeable in their wills. Fill thy purse with money. The food that to him now is as luscious as locusts shall be to him shortly as acerb as the cola quintita. She must change for youth. When she is sated with his body, she will find the error of her choice. She must have change. She must. Therefore, put money in thy purse. If thou wilt needs damn thyself, do it a more delicate way than drowning. Make all the money thou canst. If sanctimony and a frail vow betwixt an erring barbarian and a super subtle Venetian be not too hard for my wits and, and, and all the tribe of hell, thou shalt enjoy her. Therefore make money. A box of drowning thyself oh, is clean out of the way. Seek thou rather to be hanged in compassing the, thy joy than to be drowned and go with her. Without her. Wilt thou be fast in my hopes if I depend on the issue? Oh, thou art sure of me. Uh. Go, make money. I have told thee often, and I retell thee again and again. I hate the more. Uh. My cause is hearted. Thine hath no less reason. Let us be conjunctive in our revenge against him. If thou canst cuckold him, thou dost thyself a pleasure, me a sport. There are many events in the womb of time that which, which will be delivered. Traverse, go, provide thy money. We will have more of this tomorrow. Adieu. Where shall we meet in the morning? At my lodging. I will be with thee be time. Go to. Farewell. Do you hear, Rodrigo? We'll say you. No more of drowning. Do you hear? I'm a changed man. <laughs> <laughs> Go to. Farewell. Put money enough in your purse. I'll sell all my land. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
Ah, thus do I ever make my fool my purse. For I, my own, gained knowledge should profane. If I would time expend with such a snipe, but for my sport and profit, I hate the more. And it is thought abroad that twixt my sheets has done my office. I know not if it be true, but I, for mere suspicion in that kind, will do as if for surety. He holds me well, the better shall my purpose work on him. Cassio's a proper man. Let me see now. To get his place and to plume up my will in double knavery. How? Huh? How? Let's see. After some time to abuse a fellow's ear that he is too familiar with his wife. He hath a person and a smooth disposed to be suspected, framed to make women false. The more is of a free and open nature that thinks men honest. <laughs> But th that but seem to be but so, and will as tenderly be led by those nose as asses are. Oh, I have it. <laughs> it is engendered. Hell and night must bring this monstrous birth to the world's light. What from the Cape can you discern at sea? Nothing at all. It is a high wrought flood. I cannot twixt the heaven and the main descry a sail. <clears throat> Methinks the wind hath spoke aloud at land. A fuller blast ne'er shook our battlements. If it hath ruffianed so upon the sea, what ribs of oak when mountains melt on them can hold the mortise? What shall we hear of this? A segregation of the Turkish fleet, for do but stand upon the foaming shore. The chidden billow seems to help the clouds. The wind-shaked surge with high and monstrous mane seems to cast water on the burning bear and quench the guards of the ever-fixed pole. I never did like molestation view of the enchafed flood. If that the Turkish fleet be not in sheltered and embayed, they are drowned. It is impossible to bear it out. News, lads, our wars are done. The desperate tempest hath so banged the Turks that their assignment halts. A noble ship of Venice hath seen a grievous rack and sufferance on most part of their fleet. How? Is this true? The ship is here put in. Uh, Veronisa, Michael Cassio, lieutenant to the warlike Moor, Othello, is come on shore. The Moor himself at sea and is in full commission here for Cyprus. I am glad, Aunt. Tis a worthy governor. But this same Cassia, though he speak of comfort touching the Turkish loss, yet he looks sadly and prays the Moor be safe, for they were parted with foul and violent tempest. Pray heaven he be, for I have served him, and the man commands like a full soldier. Let's to the seaside ho. As well to see the vessel that's come in as to throw out our eyes for brave Othello, even till we make the main and the aerial blue an indistinct regard. Come, let's do so. For every minute is expectancy of more arrivance. Thanks, you, the valiant of this warlike isle that so approves the more. Oh, let the heavens give him defense against the elements, for I have lost him on a dangerous sea. Is he... Well shipped. His bark is stoutly timbered and his pilot a very expert and approved allowance. Therefore my hopes not suffer it to death, stand in bold cure. A sail, a sail, a sail. What noise? Town is empty. On the brow of the sea stands ranks of people and they cry, a sail. My hopes do shape him for the governor.
They do discharge their shot of courtesy, our friends at least. I pray you, sir, go forth and give us truth who tis that has arrived. I shall. But, good lieutenant, is your general wived? Most fortunately, he hath achieved a maid that paragons describe and wild fame. One that excels the quirks of blazoning pens and in the essential vesture of creation does tire the injurer. How now? Who has it put in? Tis one Iago, ancient to the general. Has had most favorable and happy speed. Tempest themselves, high seas and howling winds, the guarded rocks and conjugated sands, traitors steeped to enclog the guiltless keel, as having sense of beauty to omit their mortal natures, letting go safely by the divine Desdemona. What is she? She that I spake of our great captain's captain, left in the conduct of bold Iago, whose footing here anticipates our thoughts. A seven night speed, great Jove, Othello guard, and swell his sail with thine own powerful breath that he may bless this bay with his tall ship and make love's quick pants in Desdemona's arms. Give renewed fire to our extincted spirits and bring all Cypress comfort. Oh, behold, the riches of the ship is come ashore. You men of Cyprus, let her have your knees. Hail to thee, lady, in the grace of heaven. Before, behind thee, and on every hand, and wheel thee round. I thank you, valiant Cassio. What tidings can you tell me of my lord? He is not yet arrived, nor know I aught, but that he is well and will be shortly here. Oh, but I fear, how lost you company? The great, the great contention of the sea and skies parted our fellowship. A sail, a sail, but hark a sail. They give their greeting to the citadel. This likewise is a friend. <laughs> oh, see for the news. Good agent, you are welcome. Welcome, mistress. Let it not gall your patience, good Iago, that I extend my manners. Tis, tis my breeding that gives me this bold show of courtesy. Sir, would she give you so much of her lips as of her tongue she oft bestows on me, you would have enough. Alas, she has no speech. Faith, too much. I find it still when I have list to sleep, Mary, before your ladyship, I grant she puts her tongue in her little heart and chides with thinking. You have little cause to say so. Oh, come on. Come on. You are there's wild cats in your kitchen, saints in your injuries. Devils being offended, players in your housewifery, and housewives in your beds. Fie upon thee, slanderer. Nay, it is true, or else I am a Turk. You rise to play and go to bed to work. Uh, you shall not write my praise. No, let me not. What well, was right of me if thou shouldst praise me? Oh, gentle lady, do not put me to it, for I am nothing if not critical. Come on, <laughs> essay. Oh, there's one gone to the harbor. Hi, madam. I am not merry, <laughs> but I do beguile the thing I am by seeming otherwise. Come, how wouldst thou praise me? I am about it, but indeed my invention comes from my pate as bird lime does from freeze. It plucks out brains and all, but my muse labors. And thus she is delivered. If she be fair and wise, fairness and wit, Well praised. How if she be black and witty? If she be black and thereto have a wit, 
blackness hit. Worse and worse. How if fair and foolish? She never yet was foolish that was fair. And even her folly helped her to an heir. <laughs> These are old fond paradoxes to make fools laugh in the alehouse. What miserable praise hast thou for her that's foul and foolish? Mm -hmm. There's none so foul and foolish thereunto, but does foul pranks, which fair and wise ones do. Oh, heavy ignorance. Thou praisest the worst best. <laughs> but what praise does thou bestow on a deserving woman indeed, one that in the authority of her merit did justly put on the vouch of very malice itself? Mm -hmm. She that was ever fair and never proud, had tongue at will and yet was never loud, never lacked gold and yet went never gay, fled from her wish and yet said, now I may. She that being angered, her revenge being nigh, bade her wrong stay and her displeasure fly. She that in wisdom never was so frail to change the cod's head for a salmon's tail. She that could think and never disclose her mind, see suitors following and not look behind. She was a white, if ever such white were. To do what? To suckle fools and chronicle small beer. Most lame and impotent conclusion. Do not learn of him, Amelia, though he be thy husband. How say you, Cassio? Is he not a most profane and liberal counselor? Uh, uh, he speaks home, madam. You may relish him more in the soldier than in the scholar. Hmm. Takes her by the palm. I well said, whisper. There's little a web as this I will ensnare a great fly as Cassio. I smile upon her too. I will jive thee in thine own courtship. You say true, tis so indeed. If such tricks as these strip you out of your lieutenantry, it had been better you had not kissed your three fingers so oft, which now again, you are most apt to play the sir in. Very good, well kissed, an excellent courtesy. Tis so indeed, yet again, your fingers to your lips, would they were clyster pipes for your sake. Oh, the Moor! I know his trumpet! Ah, tis truly so. Let's meet him and receive him. Lo, where he comes. <laughs> oh, my fair warrior. My dear Othello. It gives me wonder great is my content to see you are here before me. Oh, my soul's joy. If after every tempest comes such calms, may the winds blow till they have wakened death. And let the laboring far climb hills of seas, Olympus high and dug again as low as hells from heaven. And if it were now to die, twere now to be most happy. For I fear my soul doth her content so absolute that not another comfort like this succeeds an unknown fate. The heavens forbid, but that our loves and comfort should increase, even as our days do grow. Amen to that, sweet powers. <laughs> I cannot speak enough of this content. It stops me here. It is too much of joy. And this, and this, <laughs> oh, the greatest discord be that e'er our heart shall make. <laughs> oh, you are well tuned now, but I'll set down the pegs that make this music as honest as I am. Come, let us to the castle. News, friends, our wars are done. The Turks are drowned. How does my old acquaintance of this isle? 
Honey, you shall have, you shall be well desired in Cyprus. I have found great love amongst them. Oh, my sweet. <laughs> I prattle out of fashion and I dote in mine own comforts. I pray thee, good Iago, go to the Bray and disembark my coffers. Bring thou the master to the citadel. He is a good one and with and his worthiness does challenge much respect. Come, Desdemona. <laughs> Once more, well met at Cyprus. Do meet thus thou meet me presently at the harbor. Come hither, if thou beest valiant, as they say base men being in love have then a nobility in their natures more than is near it native to them. List me. The lieutenant tonight watches on the court of guard. First, I must tell thee this Desdemona is directly in love with him. With him? Why, tis not possible. Just lay thy finger thus and let thy soul be instructed. Mark me with what violence she first loved the more, but for bragging and telling her fantastical lies to love him still for pratting. Let not thy discreet heart think it. Her eye, it, it must be fed. And what will delight, and what delight shall she have to look on the devil? When the blood is made dull with the act of sport, there should be, again, to inflame it and to give satiety a fresh appetite, loveliness and favor, sympathy and years, manners and beauties, all which the more is defective in. Now, for want of these required conveniences, her delicate tenderness will find itself abused, begin to heave the gorge, derelish, and abhor the more. Very nature will instruct her in it and compel her to some second choice. Now, sir, this granted, as it is a most pregnant and unforced position, who stands so eminent in the degree of this fortune as Cassio does? Hmm? Nay, very voluble, no further conscionable than in putting on the mere form of civility and humane seeming for the better compass of his salt and most hidden loose affection. Why none? Why none? A slipper and subtle knave, a finder out of occasion that has an eye can stamp and counterfeit advantages, though true advantage never present itself. A devilish knave. Besides, the knave is handsome, young, and hath all those requisites in him that folly and green minds look after. Pestilent, complete knave. And the woman hath found him already. I can't believe that in her. She's full of most blessed condition. Blessed figs and the wine she drinks is made of grapes. If she had been blessed, she would never have loved the more. Blessed pudding. Didst thou not see her paddle with the palm of his hand? Didst not mark that? Yes, that I did, but that was... But courtesy. Oh, lechery by this hand. An index and obscure prologue to the history of lust and foul thoughts. They met so near with their lips that their breaths embraced together. Villainous thoughts, Rodrigo. When these mutualities so marshal the way, hard at hand comes the master and main exercise the incorporate conclusion Pish. but sir be you ruled by me i have brought you from venice watch you tonight for the command i'll lay it upon you cassio knows you not I'll not be far from you. Do you find some occasion to anger Cassio either by speaking too loud or tainting his discipline or from what other course you please, which the time shall more favorably minister? Well. Sir, he's rash and very sudden in color and, and 
Oh, God, happily may strike at you, provoke him that he may. For even out of that will I cause these of Cyprus to mutiny, whose qualification shall come to no true taste again, but by the displanting of Cassio. So shall you have a shorter journey to your desires by the means I shall then have to prefer them and the impediment most profitably removed, without the which there were no expectation of our prosperity. I will do this ah. if you could bring it to any opportunity. I warrant thee. Meet me by and by the citadel. I must fetch necessities ashore. Farewell. Adieu. <laughs> ah, the Cassio loves her. I do well believe it. <sighs> she loves him. Tis apt and of great credit. The more, I'll be it, that I endure him not is of a constant loving noble nature and i dare think he'll prove to desdemona a most dear husband now i do love her too not out of absolute lust though per adventure i stand incompetent for as a great sin you know but partly led to my diet for my revenge, for that I do suspect the lusty more hath leaped into my seat. The thought of whereof doth like poisonous mineral, not my inwards. Yeah. And nothing can or shall content my soul till I am even with him, wife for wife. Failing so, yet that I put the more at least into jealousy so strong that judgment cannot cure. Which thing to do? This poor trash of Venice, whom I trace for this quick, for his quick hunting, stand the pudding on. I'll have our Michael Cassio on the hip. Abuse him to the moor in the rank garb, for I fear Cassio with my nightcap too. Make the moor thank me. Love me. And reward me for making him egregiously an ass and practicing upon his peace and quiet, even to madness that oh is here. But get confused. Knavery's plain face is never seen till used. It is Othello's pleasure, our noble and valiant general, that upon certain tidings now arrived, importing the mere perdition of the Turkish fleet, every man put himself into triumph, some to dance, some to make bonfires, each man to what sport and revels his addiction leads him. For besides these beneficial news, it is the celebration of his nuptial. So much was his pleasure should be proclaimed. All offices are open and there is full liberty of feasting from this present hour of five till the bell have tolled 11. Heaven bless the Isle of Cyprus and our noble general Othello. Good Michael, look you to the guard tonight. Let's teach ourselves that honorable stop, not to outsport discretion. Iago hath direction what to do, but notwithstanding with my personal eye, we'll look to it. <laughs> Iago is most honest. Michael, good night. Tomorrow, with your earliest, let me have speech with you. Come, my dear love. The purchase made, the fruits are to ensue. The profits yet to come between me and you. <laughs> Good night. Welcome, Miago. We must have the watch. Uh, not this hour, Lieutenant. Not tis yet ten, a, ten of the clock. Our general cast is thus early for the love of his Desdemona, who let us not therefore blame. He hath not yet made want in the night with her, and she is sport for Jove. She's a most... Exquisite lady. Ah, and I'll warrant her 
full of game. <laughs> Indeed. She's a most fresh and delicate creature. Mm. What a, you know, and I, she has, methinks it sounds a parley, parlay to provocation. An inviting eye, and yet methinks right modest. And when she speaks, is it, is it not an alarm to love? She is indeed perfection. Well, <laughs> happiness to their sheets. <laughs> Come, Lieutenant, I have a stoop of wine, and here without are a brace of cypress gallons that would fain have a measure to the health of Black Othello. Uh, not tonight. Good, Iago. I have very poor and unhappy brains for drinking. I could well wish courtesy would invent some other custom of entertainment. Oh, they are our friends. But one cup. I'll drink for you. Uh, I have drunk but one cup tonight, and that was craftily qualified to. And behold, what innovation it makes here. I am unfortunate in the infirmity, and dare not task my weakness with any more. What man? Tis a night of revels. The gallants desire it. Okay. Where are they? Here at the door. I, I pray call call them in. I'll do it, but it dislikes me. Mm. If I can fasten but one cup upon him with that which he hath drunk of tonight already, he'll be as full of quarrel and offense as my young mistress's dog. Now, my sick fool Roderigo, whom love hath turned almost the wrong side out, to Desdemona hath tonight carous potations puddle deep, and he's to watch. <laughs> Three else of Cyprus, noble swelling spirits that hold their honors in a wary distance, the very elements of this warlike isle, have I tonight flustered with flowing cups. And they watch too. Now amongst this flock of drunkards, am I to put our Cassio in some action that may offend the isle? Oh, but here they come. If consequence do but approve my dream, my boat sails freely, both wind and steam. Mm. For God, they have given me a rouse already. <laughs> Good faith, a little one, not past a pint, as I am a soldier. Some wine, ho! Oh! <laughs> and let me the can of king clink, clink. And let me the can of king clink. A soldier's a man, old man's life but a span. Why then let a soldier drink? Hey! <laughs> Some wine, boys! For God, an excellent song. Ah, uh, I learned it in England. Where indeed they are most potent in potting. Your Dane, your German, ah, your swag bellied Hollander. Drink all or uh, nothing to your English. Is your Englishman so exquisite in his drinking? Mm. But he drinks you with facility, your Dane dead drunk. He sweats not to overthrow your Almain. He gives your Hollander a vomit ere the next bottle can be filled. <laughs> uh, shh. <laughs> to the health of our general! Uh, I'm for it, Lieutenant. I'll do you justice. Oh, sweet England! King Stephen was and a worthy peer. His breeches cost him but a crown. He held them sixpence all too dear. With that, he called the tailor loan. He was a white of high renown, and thou art but of low degree, the pride that pulls the country down. Then take thy old cloak about thee. <laughs> Why no? For God, this is more exquisite song than any other. Mm -hmm. oh, ooh, you hear it again? Oh. <laughs> For I hold him to be unworthy of his place that does those things. Well, 
God's above all, and there be souls must be saved, and there be souls must not be saved. It's true, good lieutenant. For my own part, no offense to the general nor any man of quality, I, I hope to be saved. And so do I too, Lieutenant. Mm -hmm. I, but, but by your leave, not before me, the Lieutenant is to be saved before the ancient. Let's have no more of this. Let, let's, let's to our affairs. God forgive our sins, gentlemen. Let's look to our business. Do not think, gentlemen, I am drunk. Mm -hmm. This is my ancient. This is my right hand. And this is my left hand. Mm -hmm. I am not drunk now. I can stand well enough. And I speak well enough. Excellent <laughs> well. Ah, uh, why? Very well then. You must not think then that I am drunk. Mm. <clears throat> to the platform masters. Come. Let's see the watch. Ah, uh, you see this fellow that is gone before. He's a soldier fit to stand by Caesar and give direction. And do but see his vice, tis to his virtue, just an equinox, the one as long as the other. It's pity of him that I fear the trust Othello puts in him on some odd time of his infirmity will shake this island. But is he often thus? Oh, tis evermore the prologue to his sleep. He'll watch the horror log, a double set, and if drink rock not his cradle. It were well the general were put in mind of it. Mm-hmm. Perhaps he sees it not, or his good nature prizes the virtue that appears in Cassio and looks not on his evils. Is not this true? Um, how now, Roderigo, I pray you, after the lieutenant, go. And tis great pity that the noble Moor should hazard such a place as his own second with one of an engraft infirmity. It were an honest action to say so to the more. Not, not I, for this fair island. I do love Cassio well and would do much to cure him of this evil. Help! Help! Hark, what noise! Oh, oh, no, you no, no, no. rascal! What's the matter, Lieutenant? A knave, teach me my duty? I'll beat the knave into a twigging bottle. Beat me! Does thou prat, rogue? Nay, good lieutenant, oh, I pray you. No. Sir, hold your hand. Oh, Let go me, so I will knock you over the messard. Come, come, you're drunk. Drunk! The way I say, oh. go, go out and cry mutiny. Nay, good lieutenant, good. Well, gentlemen! Help, ho, Lieutenant! Thank you. Sir! Montana, no, sir! Help, Masters! Here's a goodly watch indeed. Oh, who, who's that which rings the bell? Diablo, ho! The town will rise! God's will, Lieutenant, hold! You'll be ashamed forever! What is the matter here? Zounds, I, I bleed still! I am hurt to the death! He dies! Hold for your lives. Hold, hold, Lieutenant Sir Mont Montano. Gentlemen, have you forgot all place of sense and duty? Hold, the general speaks to you. Hold for shame. Why, how now, hold? From whence ariseth this? Are we turned Turks and to ourselves do that which heaven had forbid the Ottomites? For Christian shame could buy this barbarous brawl. He that stirs next to car for his own rage holds his soul light. He 
dies upon the motion. Silence that dreadful bell. It frights the isle from her propriety. <clears throat> what is the matter, masters? Honest Iago, that looks dead with grieving, speak. Who began this? On thy love, I charge thee. I do not know. Friends all, but now, even, even now, in quarter and in terms like bride and groom, divesting them for bed. And then, but now, as if some planet had unwitted men, swords out and tilting one at other's breast in opposition bloody. I cannot speak any beginning to this peevish odds and would in action glorious I had lost those legs that brought me to a part of it. How comes it, Michael, you are thus forgot? Pray you pardon me, I, I cannot speak. <sighs> Worthy Montano, you were wont to be civil. The gravity and stillness of your youth, the world hath noted, and your name is great in mouths of wiser censure. What's the matter that you unlace your reputation thus and spin your rich opinion for the name of a night brawler? Give me answer to it. Worthy Othello, I am hurt to danger. Your officer Iago can inform you while I spare speech, which something now offends me. All of that I do know, nor know I aught by me that said or done amiss this night, unless self-charity be sometimes a vice, and to defend ourselves it, it be a sin when violence assails us. No, by heaven. My blood begins my safer guides to rule in passion, having my best judgment collied, assays to lead the way. Zooms, if I stir or do but lift this arm, the best of you shall sink in my rebuke. Give me to know how this foul rout began, who set it on, and he that is approved in this offense, though he had twinned with me both at birth, shall lose me. What? In a town of war, yet wild, the people's hearts brimful of fear to manage private and domestic quarrel? In night, and on the court and guard of safety, it is monstrous. Iago, who began it? If partially affined or leagued in office, thou dost deliver more or less than truth, thou art no soldier. Touch me not so near. I had rather have this tongue cut from my mouth than it should do offense to Michael Cassio. Yet I persuade myself to speak the truth shall nothing wrong him. Thus it is, General Montano and myself being in speech, there comes a fellow crying out for help and Cassio following him with determined sword to execute upon him. Sir, this gentleman steps into Cassio and entreats his pause. Myself, the crying fellow, did pursue, lest by his clamor, as it so fell out, the town might fall in fright. He swift of foot outran my purpose, and I returned rather for that I had heard the clink and fall of swords and Cassio high in oath, which till tonight I ne'er might say before. When I came back, for this was brief, I found them close together at a blow and thrust, even as again they were when you yourself did part them. More of this matter cannot I report, but men are men. The best sometimes forget. Though Cassio did some little wrong to him, as men in rage strike those that wish them best, Yet surely Cassio, I believe, received from him that fled some strange indignity which patience could not pass. I know, Iago, thy honesty and love doth mine this mince this matter, making it light to Cassio. Cassio, I love thee, but never more be officer of mine. 
Look, if my gentle love not be raised up, I'll make thee an example. What is the matter, dear? All's well now, sweetie. Come away to bed. Sir, for your hurts, myself will be your surgeon. Lead him off. Iago, look with care about the town and silence those whom this vile brawl distracted. Come, Desdemona. Tis the soldier's life to have their balmy slumbers waked with strife. What? Are you hurt, Lieutenant? I passed all surgery. Mary, God forbid. Oh, reputation, reputation, reputation. Oh, I have lost my reputation. I have lost the immortal part of myself and what remains is bestial. My reputation, Iago, my reputation. Ah, as I am an honest man, I had thought you had received some bodily wound. There is more sense in that than in reputation. Reputation is an idle and most false imposition, oft got without merit and lost without deserving. You have lost no reputation at all, unless you repute yourself such a loser. But man, there are more ways to recover the general again. You are but now cast in his mood. Punishment more in policy than in malice, even so as one would beat his offenseless dog a fright, an imperious lion. Sue to him again, and he's yours. I, I will rather sue to be despised than to deceive so good a commander with so slight, so drunken, and so indiscreet an affair. Mm. Ah, drunk! And speak parrot and squabble, swagger, swear, and discourse fused him with, with one's own shadow. Oh, thou invisible spirit of wine, if thou hast no name to be known by, let us call thee devil. What uh, was he that followed with your sword? What had he done to you? Oh, I know not. Isn't it possible? I remember a mass of things, but nothing distinctly. A quarrel, but nothing whereof. Oh, God, I, that men should put an enemy in their mouths to steal away their brains. <laughs> that we should, with joy, pleasance, revel, and applause, transform ourselves into beasts. Why, but you are now well enough. How came you thus recovered? It hath pleased the devil drunkenness to give place to the devil wrath. Uh, One unperfectness shows me another to, to, to make me frankly despise myself. Oh, come. Um, you are too severe a moraler. As the time, the place, and the condition of this country stands, I could heartily wish this had not befallen. But since it is, as it is, mend it for your own good. I will ask him for my place again. Mm -hmm. And he shall tell me I am a drunkard. Mm. And I, as many mouths as Hydra, such an answer would stop them all. To be now a, a sensible man, by and by, a fool, and presently a beast. Oh, strange. Oh, every inordinate cup is unblessed, and the ingredient is the devil. <laughs> good wine is a good, familiar creature. Oh, if it be well used, huh? exclaim no more against it. And, good lieutenant, I think you think I love you. I have well proved it, sir. I drunk. <laughs> you or any man living may be drunk at a time, man. I'll tell you what you shall do. Hmm? Our general's wife is now 
the general. I may say so in this respect, for that he hath devoted and given up himself to the contemplation, Mark, and, and denotement of her parts and graces. Confess yourself freely to her. Importune her help to put you in your place again. She is of so free, so kind, so apt, so blessed a disposition. She holds it in, in a vice in her goodness, not to do more than she is requested. This broken joint between you and her husband entreat her to splinter. Hmm? And my fortunes against any lay worth naming. This crack of your love shall grow stronger than it was before. You advise me well. I protest in the sincerity of love and honest kindness. I, I, I think it freely. And betimes in the morning, I will beseech the virtuous Desdemona to undertake for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am desperate of my fortunes if they check me here. You are in the right. Good night, Lieutenant. I must to the watch. Good night. Honest, Iago. And what's he then that says I played the villain? When this advice is free, I give and honest, probable to thinking, and indeed the course to win the more again. Oh, for tis most easy. The inclining Desdemonus to subdue in any honest suit. She's framed as fruitful as the free elements. And then for her to win the more, weren't who renounce his baptism, all seals and symbols of redeemed sin. His soul is so infettered to her love that she may make unmake, do what she lists, even as her appetite shall play the God with his weak function. <laughs> How am I then a villain? To counsel Cassio in this parallel course, directly to his good, the divinity of hell. When devils will the blackest sins put on, they do suggest at first with heavenly shows as I do now. For whilst this honest fool plies Desdemona to repair his fortune, and she for him pleads strongly to the more, oh, I'll pour this pestilence into his ear that she repeals him for her body's lust. And by how much she strives to do him good, she shall undo her credit with the more. So will I turn her virtue into pitch and out of her own goodness make the net shall enmesh them all. <laughs> How now, Rodrigo? I do follow here in the chase, not like a hound that hunts but one that fills up the cry. My money is almost gone. I have been tonight exceedingly well cudgeled, and I think the issue will be I shall have so much experience for my pains, and so, with no money at all and little more wit, return again to Venice. No! No, how poor are they that have not patience? What wound did ever heal but by degrees? Thou knowest we work by wit and not by witchcraft, and wit depends on dilatory time. Does not go well. Cassio hath beaten thee, and thou by that small herd hast cashiered Cassio. Though other things grow fair against the sun, yet fruits that blossom first will first be ripe. Content thyself a while by the mass. Tis morning. 
pleasure and action make the hours seem short. Retire thee, go where thou art billeted. Way, I say, thou shalt no more hereafter. Nay, get thee gone. Mm. <sighs> oh. Two things are to be done. My wife must move for Cassio to her mistress. A sudder on myself a while to draw the moor apart and bring him jump when he may Cassio find soliciting his wife. Ah, that's the way. Oh God, dull device by coldness and delay. Masters, play here. I will content your pains. Something that's uh, brief and bid good morrow, general. Why, masters, have your instruments been in Naples that they speak in the news thus? No, sir, how? Are these, I pray you, wind instruments? Aye, Mary, are they, sir? Oh, thereby hangs a tale. Whereby hangs a tale? A Mary, sir, by many a wind instrument that I know. But masters, uh, here is money for you. Uh, and the general so likes your music that he desires you, for love's sake, to make no more noise with it. Well, sir, we will not. Uh, if you have any music that may not be heard, do it again. But as they say, to hear music, the general does not greatly care. We have none such, sir. Uh, then put up your pipes in your bag for all away. Go, vanish away. Dost thou hear, mine honest friend? No, I hear not your honest friend. I hear you. Pray thee, keep up thy quillets. There's a poor piece of gold for thee if the gentlewoman that attends the general's wife be stirring. Tell her there's one Cassio and treats her a little favor of speech. Wilt thou do this? She is stirring, sir. If she was stir hither, I shall seem to notify unto her. Do good, my friend. Uh, in happy time, Iago. You have not been abed then? Why, no. The day had broke before we parted. I, I have made bold, Iago, to send in to your wife. My suit to her is that she will, to virtuous Desdemona, procure me some access. I'll send her to you presently. And I'll devise a mean to draw the moor out of the way, that your converse and business may be more free. I humbly thank you for it. I never knew a Florentine more kind and honest. Good morrow, good lieutenant. I am sorry for your displeasure. But all will sure be well. The general and his wife are talking of it, and she speaks for you stoutly. The more replies that he you heard is of great fame in Cyprus and great affinity, and that in wholesome wisdom he might not but refuse you. But he protests he loves you and needs no other suitor but his likings to take the safest occasion by the front to bring you in again. Yet. I beseech you, uh, if you think fit or that if it may be done, give me advantage of some brief discourse with Desdemona alone. Pray you come in. I will bestow you where you shall have time to speak your bosom freely. Hmm? I am much bound for you. These letters give Iago to the pilot and by him do my duties to the Senate. That done? I'll be walking on the works. Repair there to me. Well, my good lord, I'll do it. This fortification, gentlemen, shall we see it? We'll wait upon your lordship. Be thou assured, good Cassio, I will do all my abilities in thy behalf. Oh, good madam, do. I warrant it grieves my husband as if the cause were his. 
Oh, that's an honest fellow. Do not doubt, Cassio, but I will have my lord and you again as friendly as you were. Bounteous, madam. <clears throat> never shall become of Michael Cassio. He's never anything but your true servant. I know it. I thank you. You do love my lord. You have known him long, and be you well assured, he shall in strangeness stand no farther off than in a politic distance. I. But, lady, that policy may either last so long, or feed upon such nice and watershed diet, or breed itself so out of circumstances that I, being absent and my place supplied, my general will forget my love and service. Do not doubt that. Before Amelia here, I give thee warrant of thy place, assure thee. If I do vow a friendship, I'll perform it to the last article. My lord shall never rest. I'll watch him tame and talk him out of patience. His bed shall seem a school, his board a shrift. I'll intermingle everything he does with Cassio's suit. Therefore, <laughs> be merry, Cassio, for thy solicitor shall rather die than give thy cause away. Oh, madam, uh, here comes my lord. Madam, uh I'll take my leave. Why, stay and hear me speak. Madam, not now. I, I am very ill at ease, unfit for mine own purpose. Well, do your discretions. <laughs> I like not that. What does that say? Uh, nothing, my lord. Of, or if. I, I know not what. Was that not Cassio parted from my way? Cassio, my lord. No, sure, I cannot think it, that he would steal away so guilty-like, seeing your coming? I do believe twas he. Oh, now, my lord, I have been talking with a suitor here, <laughs> a man that languishes in your displeasure. Who is it, you mean? Why, your lieutenant, Cassio, good my lord, if I have any grace or power to move you, his present reconciliation take, for if he be not one that truly loves you, that errs in ignorance and not in cunning, I have no judgment in an honest faith. I pray thee, call him back. When he hints now. Yes, faith, so humbled that he hath left part of his grief with me to suffer with him. Good love, call him back. Not now, sweet Desdemona, some other time. But shall it be shortly? The sooner, sweet, for you. Shall it be tonight at supper? No, not tonight. Tomorrow dinner, then. I shall not dine at home. I meet the captains of the Citadel. Why then? Tomorrow night, or Tuesday morn, or Tuesday noon, or night, on Wednesday morn, I prithee, name the time, but let it not exceed three days. In faith. He's penitent, and yet his trespass in our common reason, save that they say the wars must make example out of her best, is not almost a fault to incur a private check. When shall he come? Tell me, Othello, I wonder in my soul that you would ask me that I should deny or stand so mammering on. What? Michael Cassio, that came a wooing with you, and so many a time when I have spoke of you dispraisingly hath taken your part, to have so much to do to bring him in. Fair lady, I could do much. Pretty no more. Let him come when he will. I will deny thee nothing. Why? This is not a boon. 
It is as I should entreat you wear your gloves or feed on nourishing dishes or keep you warm or sue to you to do a peculiar profit to your own person. Nay, when I have a suit wherein I mean to touch your love indeed, it shall be full of poise and difficult weight and fearful to be granted. I will deny thee nothing. <laughs> Whereon I do beseech thee, grant me this, to leave me but little to myself. Shall I deny you? No. Farewell, my lord. Farewell, my Desdemona. I'll come to thee straight. Amelia, come. Be as your fancies teach you. Whatever you be, I am obedient. Excellent wretch. <laughs> oh, perdition catch my soul, but I do love thee. And when I love thee not, chaos has come again. My noble lord. What dost thou say, Iago? Did Michael Cassio, when you wooed my lady, know of your love? He did, from the first to last. Why dost thou ask? Before no, before a satisfaction of my thought, no further alarm. Why of thy thought, Iago? I, I did not think he had been acquainted with her. Oh, yes, and went between us very oft. Indeed. Indeed. Hmm. I indeed. Discernest thou aught in that? Is he not honest? Honest, my lord. Honest, I honest. My lord, I, for aught I know. What dost thou think? Think. My lord. Think, my lord, by heaven how echoes to me, as if there was some monster in thy thought too hideous to be shown. Thou dost mean something. I heard thee say even now, thou likest not that when Cassio left my wife. What it's not like? And when I told thee of he was of my counsel in my whole course of wooing, thou criedst indeed. And it's contract thy in purse, thy brow together as if thou had some shut up in thy brain, some horrible conceit. If thou dost love me, show me thy thought. My lord, you know I love you. I think thou dost. And for I know thou art full of love and honesty and weighest thy words before thou givest them breath. Therefore these stops of thine fright me the more. For such things in false, in a false disloyal knave are tricks of custom. But in a man that's just, they're close dilations working from the heart that passion cannot rule. From Michael Cassio, I dare be sworn, I think that he is honest. I think so too. Men should be what they seem, or those that be not, would they might seem none. Certain, men should be what they seem. Why then, I think Cassio's an honest man. Nay, yet there's more in this. I pray thee speak to me as to thy thinkings, as thou dost ruminate and give thy worst of thoughts the worst of words. Good, my lord, pardon me. Though I am bound to every act of duty, I am not bound to that all slaves are free to. What are my thoughts? What? Say they are vile and false. As where's that palace wherein two foul things sometimes intrude not? Who has that breast so pure, but some uncleanly apprehensions keep leets and law days and in sessions sit with meditations lawful? Let us conspire against thy friend, Iago. If thou would think him wronged and makes this ear a stranger to thy thoughts. I do beseech you. Though I perchance am vicious in my guess, as I confess, it is my nature's plague to spy upon into abuses and off my jealousy shapes faults that are not. That your wisdom then from one that so imperfectly conjects would take no notice nor build yourself a trouble out of his scattering and unsure observance. It were not for your quiet, nor your good, nor for 
my manhood, honesty, and wisdom to let you know my thoughts. Zooms, what dost thou mean? Good name in man and woman, dear my lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. Who steals my purse, steals trash. Tis something, nothing, twas mine, tis his, and has been slave to thousands, but he that filches from me my good name robs me of that which not enriches him and makes me poor instead. By heaven, I'll know your thoughts. You cannot. If my heart were in your hand, nor shall it not, whilst tis in my custody. Ha! Oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. That cuckold lives in bliss, who, certain of his fate, loves not his wronger. But, oh, what damned minutes tells his or who dotes, yet doubts, suspects, yet strongly loves. Oh, misery! Poor and content is rich, and rich enough, but rich as fineless is as poor as winter to him that ever fears he shall be poor. Ah, good God, thy souls of all my tribe defend from jealousy. Why? Why is this? Thinks thou I'd make a life of jealousy? To follow still the changes of the moon with fresh suspicions? No. To be once in doubt is once to be resolved, exchange me for a goat when I shall turn the business of my soul to such exsufflicate and blown surmises matching thy inference. It is not to make me jealous to say my wife is fair, feeds well, loves company, is free of speech, sings, plays, and dances well. Well, virtue is, these are more virtuous. Nor from mine own weak merits will I draw the smallest fear or doubt of her revolt, for she had eyes, and she chose me. No, Iago, I will see before I doubt. Where I doubt, prove, and on the proof, there is no more but this, away at once with love or jealousy. I... Am glad of this, for now I shall have reason to show the love and duty that I bear you with franker spirit. Therefore, as I am bound, receive it from me. I speak not yet of proof. Look to your wife, observe her well with Cassia, wear your eyes thus, not jealous nor secure. I would not have your free and noble nature out of self-bounty. Can we be abused? Look to it. I know our country disposition well. In Venice, they do let God see the pranks. They dare not show their husbands. Their best conscience is not to leave it undone, but keep it unknown. Does thou say so? She did deceive her father, marrying you. And when she seemed to shake and fear your looks, she loved them the most. And so she did. Why, go to then. Seize that so young could give out such a seeming to seal her father's eyes up. Close as a oak he thought was witchcraft. But I am much to blame. I humbly do beseech you of your pardon for too much loving you. I'm bound to thee forever. I see this hath a little dashed your spirits. Not a jot. Faith. Not a jot. Faith, I fear it has. I hope you will consider what is spoke comes from my love, but I do see you are moved. 
I am to pray you not to strain my speech to grosser issues, nor to larger reach than to suspicion. I will not. Should you do so, my lord, my speech should fall into such vile success, which my thoughts aim not. Cassio, my worthy friend, my lord, I see you are moved. No, not much moved. I do not think, but Desdemona is honest. Long live she so, and long live you to think so. And yet how nature erring from itself. There's the point, as to be bold with you, not to affect many proposed matches of her own climb, complexion, and degree, whereto we see in all such, all things nature tends. <sighs> One may smell in such a will most rank, foul disproportions, thoughts unnatural, but pardon me, I do not in position distinctly speak of her. Though I may fear her will, recoiling to her better judgment, may fall to match you with her country forms, and happily repent. Farewell. Farewell. If more thou dost perceive, let me know more. Set on thy wife to observe. Leave me, Iago. My lord, I take my leave. Why did I marry? This honest creature doubtless sees and knows more, but much more that he unfolds. My lord, I would, I might entreat your honor to scan this thing no farther, leave it to time. Although tis fit that Cassio have his place, for sure he, he fills it up with great ability. Yet if you please to hold him off a while, you shall by that perceive him and his means. Note if your lady strain his entertainment with any strong or vehement importunity, much will be seen in that. In the meantime, let me be thought too busy in my fears as worthy cause I have to fear I am and hold her free. I do beseech your honor. Fear not my government. Once more, I take my leave. <sighs> This fellow is of exceeding honesty and knows all qualities with a learned spirit of human dealings. If I do prove her haggard, though that her jesses were my dear heartstrings, I'd whistle her off and let her down the wind to pray at fortune. Happily, for I am black and have not those soft parts of conversation that chamberers have, or for I am declined into the veil of years. And that's not much. She's gone. I am abused and my relief must be to loathe her. Oh, curse of marriage that we can call these delicate creatures ours and not their appetites. I'd rather be a toad and live upon the vapor of a dungeon than keep a corner in the thing I love for others' uses. Yet yeah, tis the plague of great ones, prerogative, are they less than the base, tis destiny unshunable like death. Even then this forked plague is fated to us when we do quicken. Look where she comes. If she be false, oh, heaven mocks itself. I'll not believe it. How no, my dear Othello, your dinner and the generous islanders by you invited to attend your presence. I am to blame. Why do you speak so faintly? Are you not well? I have a pain upon my forehead here. Faith, that's with watching. Twill away again. Let me but bind it hard within this hour. It will be well. Your napkin is too little. Let it alone. Come, I'll go with you. I'm very sorry that you are not well. <laughs> I am glad I have found this napkin. This was her first remembrance from the moor. 
My wayward husband hath a hundred times wooed me to steal it. But she so loves the token, for he conjured her she should ever keep it, that she reserves it evermore about her to kiss and talk to. Hmm. I'll have the work taken out and give it Iago. What he will do with it, heaven knows, not I. I nothing but to please his fantasy. And now, what do you do here alone? Do not you chide. I have a thing for you. <laughs> you have a thing for me. It is a common thing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, to have a foolish wife. Oh, is that all? Hmm. 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 What will you give me now for that same handkerchief? What handkerchief? What handkerchief? Why, that the Moor first gave to Desdemona that which she so oft did bid me steal? Has yes. stolen it from her. No, faith. She let it drop by negligence, and to the advantage I, being here, took it up. Look. Mm. Here it is. Good wench, give it to me. What will you do with it, that you have been so earnest to have me filch it? What, what is that to you? If it be not for some purpose of import, give it me again. Poor lady shall run mad when she shall lack it. Oh, be not known on it. I have use for it. Go. Leave me alone. Mm. I will in Cassio's lodging lose this napkin and let him find it. Trifles light as air are to the jealous confirmation strong as proofs of holy writ. This may do something. The more already changes with my poison. Dangerous conceits are in their nature's poisons, which at the first are scarce found to distaste, but with little act upon the blood burn like the mines of sulfur. Did say so. Look where he comes. Not poppy, nor mandragora, nor all the drowsy syrups of the world shall ever medicine thee to that sweet sleep that which thou owedst yesterday. False to me. Why, how now, General? No more of that. Avant, be gone. Thou hast set me on the rack. I swear it is better to, to be much abused than but to know it a little. How oh, no, my lord. What sense had I of her stolen hours of lust? I saw it not. It harmed, I thought it not, it harmed not me. I slept the next night well, fed well, was free and merry. I found not Cassio's kisses on her lips. He that is robbed, not wanting what is stolen, let him not know it. And he's not robbed at all. I am sorry to hear this. I had been happy if the general camp, pioneers and all, had tasted her sweet body so I had nothing known. Oh, no. Forever farewell the tranquil mind. Farewell content. Farewell the plumage troops and the big wars that makes ambition virtue. Oh, farewell. Farewell the neighing steed and the shrill trump and the spirit stirring drum, the ear piercing fife, the royal banner and all quality, pride and pomp and circumstance of glorious war. And all oh, you mortal engines whose root throat the immortal Jove, dread clamors counterfeit, farewell. Othello's occupation gone. Is it possible, my lord? Be thou sure. Prove my love a whore. <laughs> Be sure of it. Give me the ocular proof, or by the worth of mine eternal soul, thou hast been better had been born a dog than answer my wicked wrath. Does it come to this? Make me to see it. Or at least I'll prove it that the probation bear no hinge nor loop to hang a doubt on, or woe upon thy life. No, no, the Lord. If thou dost slander her and torture me, never pray more. Abandon all remorse. On horror's head, horrors accumulate. Do deeds to make heaven weep. All earth amazed, for nothing canst thou to damnation add greater than that. No! Pray so, heaven forgive me. Are you a man? 
have you a soul or a sense. God buy you. Take mine office. Wretched fool that lovest to make thine honesty a vice. Ah, monstrous world. Take note. Take note, O world. To be direct and honest is not safe. I thank you for this prophet, and from hence I'll love no friend, since love breeds such offense. Nay, stay, stay. Thou shouldst be honest. I should be wise, for honesty's a fool, and loses that it works for. By the world I think my wife be honest. And yet I think she is not. I think that thou art just and think thou art not. I'll have some proof. Her name that was as fresh as Diane's visage is now begrimed and black as mine own face. If there be cords or knives or poison or fire or suffocating streams, I'll not endure it. Would I were satisfied? I see, sir. You are eaten up with passion. I do repent me that I put it to you. You would be satisfied. Would. Nay, I will. And nay, but how? How satisfied, my lord? Would you, the supervisor, grossly gape on? Behold her taught? To condemnation? Oh! It were a tedious oh. difficulty, I think, to bring them to that prospect. Damn them, then. If ever mortal eyes do see them bolster more than their own. What then? How then? What shall I say? Where's satisfaction? It is impossible you should see this. Were they as prime as goats, as hot as monkeys, as salt as wolves in pride, and fools as gross as ignorance made drunk? Yet I say, if imputation and strong circumstances which lead directly to the door of truth will give you satisfaction, you might have it. Give me a living reason she's disloyal. I do, I do not like the office. The fifth I have entered in this cause so far, pricked to do it by foolish honesty and love. I will go on. I lay with Cassio lately and being troubled with a raging tooth, I could not sleep. There are a kind of men so loose of soul that in their sleeps will mutter their affairs. One of this kind is Cassio. In sleep, I heard him say, Sweet Desdemona, let us be wary, let us hide our loves. And then, sir, he would gripe and wring my hand, cry, Oh, sweet creature. Then kiss me hard, as if plucked up kisses by the roots that grew upon my lips. Then laid his leg over my thigh and sighed. And kissed and then cried, cursed fate that gave thee to the moor. Oh, monstrous, monstrous. Okay, this was but his dream. But this denoted a foregone conclusion. Tis a shrewd doubt, though it be but a dream. And this may help to thicken other proofs that do demonstrate thinly. I'll tear her all to pieces. Nay, yet be wise. Yet we see nothing done. She may be honest yet. Tell me but this. Have you not sometimes seen a handkerchief spotted with strawberries in your wife's hand? I gave her such a one. It was my first gift. I know not that. Oh, but such a handkerchief, I am sure it was your wife's. Did I today see Cassio wipe his beard with? If it be that. If it be that, or any, that was hers. 
It speaks against her with the other proofs. Oh, that the slave had 40,000 lives. One is too poor, too weak for my revenge. Now do I see tis true. Look here, Iago, all my fond love, thus I do blow to heaven. <sighs> tis gone. Arise, black vengeance. From the hollow of hell, yield up, O oh love, thy crown and heart a throne to tyrannous hate. Swell bosom with thy fraught, for tis of aspic's tongues. Be content. Oh, blood, blood, blood. Patience, I say, your mind perhaps may change. Never, Iago, like, like, like to the Pontic Sea whose icy current and compulsive course never feels retiring ebb, but keeps due on to the propontic and the hellish pont. Even so, my bloody thoughts, with violent pace shall I ne'er look back, ne'er ebb to humble love to let capable and wide revenge swallow them up. Now, by yon marble heaven and the due reverence of a sacred vow, here, I hear, engage my words. Do not, do not rise yet. Witness, your ever burning lights above, your elements that clip us round about. Witness that here Iago doth give up the execution of his wit, hands, heart, to wronged a fellow service. Let him command and to obey shall be in me remorse, that bloody business ever. I greet thy love, not with vain thanks, but with acceptance, bounteous, and I will, and will upon the instant put thee to it. Within these three days, let me hear thee say that Cassio's not alive. My friend is dead. Tis done at your request. Let her live. Damn her! Lewd minx, damn her! Damn her. Go with me apart. I will withdraw to furnish me with some swift means of death for the fair devil. Now art thou my lieutenant. I am your own forever. Do you know, sir, where Lieutenant Cassio lies? <laughs> I dare not say uh, he lies anywhere. Why, man? <laughs> He's a soldier. And for me to say a soldier lies, tis stabbing. So to uh, where lodges he? Oh, to tell you where he lodges is to tell you where I lie. Can anything be made of this? I don't know about where he lodges. And for me to devise a lodging and say he lies here or he lies there, were to lie in my own throat. Can you inquire him out and be edified by report? Oh, hmm. I will catechize the world for him. That is, make questions and by them answer. Seek him, bid him come hither. Tell him I have moved my lord on his behalf and hope all will be well. Oh, I, to do this is within the compass of a man's wit. And, um, oh, and therefore I will attempt the doing of it. <clears throat> Where should I lose the handkerchief, Amelia? I, I know not, madam. Believe me, I had rather lost my purse full of crusados. And, uh, but my noble moor is true of mind and made of no such baseness as jealous creatures are. It were enough to put him to ill thinking. Is he not jealous? Who, he? <laughs> I think the son where he was born drew all such humors from him. Uh -huh. oh, look where he comes. I will not leave him now till Cassio be called to him. How is it with you, my lord? Well, my good lady. 
A little hardness to this symbol. How do you, Desdemona? Well, my good lord. Give me your hand. This hand is moist, my lady. It hath felt no age, nor known no sorrow. This argues fruitfulness and liberal heart. Hot. Hot and moist. This hand of yours requires a sequester from liberty. Fasting and prayer, much castigation, exercise devout. But here's a young and sweeting devil here that commonly rebels. Tis a good hand, a frank one. You may indeed say so, for twas that hand that gave away my heart. A liberal hand. The hearts of old gave hands, but our new heraldry is hands, not hearts. <laughs> I cannot speak of this. Come now, your promise. What promise, Chuck? I have sent to bid Cassio come speak with you. I have a salt and sorry room with me. <clears throat> Lend me thy handkerchief. Here, my lord. The one which I gave you. I have it not about me. Not? No, faith, my lord. That's a fault. That handkerchief did an Egyptian to my mother give. She was a charmer and could almost read the thoughts of people. She told her while she kept it would make her amiable and subdue my father entirely to her love. But if she lost it or made a gift of it, my father's eye should hold her loathed and his spirit should hunt after new fancies. She, dying, gave it me and bid me when my fate would have me wived to give it her. I did so and take heed on it. Make it a darling like your precious eye to lose it or give it away with such perdition as nothing else could match. It's possible. Tis true. There's magic in the web of it. A sibyl that had numbered in the world the sun to course 200 compasses and her prophetic fury sowed the work. The worms were hallowed that did breed the silk and it was dyed in mummy which the skillful conserved of maidens' hearts. In faith, it's true. Most veritable. Therefore, look to it well. <laughs> what to God, I had never seen it. <laughs> ha! Wherefore? Why do you speak so startlingly and rash? It's lost? It's gone? Speak, is it out of the way? Heaven bless us. Say you? It is not lost. But what and if it were? How? I say it is not lost. Fetch it, let me see it. Why so I can, sir, but I will not now. <laughs> this is a trick to put me from my suit. Pray you, let Cassio be received again. Fetch me the handkerchief. My mind misgives. Come, come. You'll never meet a more sufficient man. The handkerchief. I pray, talk me of Cassio. A man that all his time hath founded his good fortunes on your love, shared dangers with you. The handkerchief. You are to blame. Soon. Is not this man jealous? I never saw this before. Sure, there's some wonder in this handkerchief. I am most unhappy in the loss of it. Tis not a year or two shows us a man. They're all but stomachs, and we all but food. They eat us hungrily, and when they are full, they belch us. Oh. 
Look, you, uh, Cassio and my husband. If there is no other way, tis she must do it. And lo, the happiness. Go and inopportune her. Oh no, good Cassio. What's the news with you? Madam, my former suit. I do beseech you that by your virtuous means I may give again exist and be a member of his love, whom I, with all the office of my heart, entirely honor. I would not be delayed if my offense be of such mortal kind that nor my service past, nor present sorrows, nor purposed merit in fortitude can ransom me into his love again, but to know so must be my benefit. So shall I clothe me in enforced content and shut myself up in some other course to fortune's alms. Alas, thrice gentle Cassio, I, my advocation is not now in tune. My lord is not my lord, nor should I know him were he in favor as in humor altered. So help me every spirit sanctified. As I, I have spoken for you all my best and stood within the blank of his displeasure for my free speech, you must a while be patient. What I can do, I will, and more I will than for myself I dare. Let that suffice you. Is my lord angry? He went hence but now, and certainly in strange unquietness. Can he be angry? I have seen the cannon when it hath blown his ranks into the air, and like the devil from his very arm puffed his own brother. He is angry. Something of a moment then. I will go meet him. There's matter in it indeed. If he be angry. Could be, do so. Something sure of state, either from Venice or some unhatched practice made demonstrable here in Cyprus to him hath puddled his clear spirit. And in such cases, men's natures wrangle with inferior things, though great ones are their object. And even so, for let our finger ache and it induce our other healthful members even to a sense of pain. Nay, we must think men are not gods, nor of them look for such observancy as fits the bridle. Shrew me much, Amelia. I was, unhandsome warrior as I am, arraigning his unkindness with my soul. But now I find I had suborned the witness, and he's indicted falsely. Pray heaven it be state matters, as you think, and no conception nor no jealous toy concerning you. Last the day, I never gave him cause. Ah, but jealous souls will not be answered so. They are not ever jealous for the cause, but jealous for their jealous. It is a monster begot upon itself, born on itself. Heaven keep the monster from a fellow's mind. Oh, lady, amen. I will go seek him. Matthew, walk hereabout. If I do find him fit, I'll move your suit and seek to effect it to my uttermost. I humbly thank your ladyship. Save you, friend Cassio. Ah, what makes you from home? How is it with you most fair, Bianca? In faith, sweet love, I was coming to your house. And I was going to your lodging, Cassio. What? Keep a week away seven days and nights? Eight score, eight hours. And lovers absent hours more tedious than the dial eight score times. A weary reckoning. Pardon me. Bianca, I have this while with leaden thoughts been pressed, but I shall in more continuate time strike off the score of absence, sweet Bianca. Take me this workout. Cassio, whence came this? <gasps> this is some token from a newer friend. To the felt absence now I feel a cause is come to this? Well, well. Go to, woman. Throw your vile guesses in the devil's teeth from whence you have them. You are jealous now 
that this is from some mistress, some remembrance. No, by my faith, Bianca. Why? Whose is it? I know not neither. I found it in my chamber. I like the work well, ere it be demanded as like enough it will. I would have it copied. Take it and do it and leave me from this time. Leave you? Wherefore? I do attend here on the general and think it no addition, nor my wish, to have him see me womaned. Why, I pray you? Not that I love you not. But that you do not love me. I pray you bring me on the way a little, and say if I shall see you soon at night. Tis but a little way that I can bring you, for I attend here, but I'll see you soon. Must be circumstanced. Will you think so? Think so, Iago? <laughs> to kiss in private. An unauthorized kiss? Or to be naked with her friend in bed, an hour or more, not meaning any harm. Naked in bed, Iago, and not mean harm. It is hypocrisy against the devil. They that mean virtuously and yet do so, the devil their virtue tempts, and they tempt heaven. If they do nothing, tis a venial slip. But if I give my wife a handkerchief. What then? Why, then tis hers, my lord. And being hers, she may, I think, bestow it on any man. She is protectress of her honor, too. May she give that? Her honor is an essence that's not seen. They have it at very oft that have it not, but for the handkerchief. For heaven, I would most gladly have forgot it. <laughs> Thou saidst, oh, it comes over my memory as doth the raven or the infectious house bold into all. He had my handkerchief. <sighs> what of that? That's not so good now. What, if I had said I had seen him do you wrong? or heard him say, as knaves be such abroad, who have ha by their own opportune suit or voluntary dotage of some mistress convinced or supplied them, cannot choose, but they must blab. Have he said anything? He hath, my lord. But be you well assured, no more than he'll unswear. What have he said? Faith, that he did. I know not what he did. What? What? Why? With her? With her. On her. What you will. Lie with her. Lie on her. We say lie on her when they belie her. Lie with her. Zooms, not spulsum. Handkerchief. Confessions. Handkerchief to confess and be hanged for the first, for, for his labor, first to be hanged, and then to confess, I tremble that it nature would not invest herself in such shadowing passion without some instruction. It is not words that shakes me thus, first nose as ears lift as possible. Confess, handkerchief, oh devil. <laughs> Person work. Us credulous fools are caught, and many worthy and chaste dames, even thus, all guiltless, meet reproach. My home, my lord, my lord, I say, Atho! How now, Cassio? What's the matter? My lord is fallen into an epilepsy. This is his second fit. He had one yesterday. R rub him about the temples. No, forbear. The lethargy must have his quiet course. If not, he foams at the mouth and by and by breaks out into savage madness. Oh, look, he stirs. If you withdraw yourself a little while, he will recover straight. When he is gone, I would, on great occasion, speak with you. <coughs> Sit, General. Have you not hurt your head? Dost thou mock me? And mock you not? By heaven, would you, would you bear your fortune like a man? A horned man's a monster and a beast. There's many a beast then in a populous city, and many a civil monster. Did he confess it? Good sir, be a man. 
think every bearded fellow that's but yoked may draw with you? There's millions now alive that nightly lie in those improper beds which they dare swear peculiar. Your case is better. Oh, God, tis the spite of hell, the fiend's arch mock, to lip a wanton in a secure couch and to suppose her chaste. No, let me know. And knowing what I am, I know what she shall be. Oh, thou art wise. Tis certain. Stand you a while apart. Confine yourself but in a patient list. Whilst you were here overwhelmed with your grief, a passion most unsuiting such a man, Cassio came hither. I shifted him away and laid good excuses upon your ecstasy, begged him anon return and here speak with me, the which he promised. Do but cave yourself and mark the fleers, the gibes, and notable scorns that dwell in every region of his face, for I will make him tell the tale anew. Where, how, how oft, how long ago, and when he hath, and is again to cope your wife. I say, but mark his gesture, merry patience, or I shall say you are all in a spleen and nothing of a man. Dost thou hear, Iago? I will be found most cunning in my patience. But dost thou hear? Most bloody. That's not a miss. But yet keep time in all. Will you withdraw? Now, will I question Cassio of Bianca? housewife that by selling her desires buys herself bread and cloves. It is a creature that dotes on Cassio, as tis the strumpet's plague to beguile many and be beguiled by one. He, when he hears of her, cannot restrain from the excess of laughter. Here he comes. As he shall smile, a fellow shall go mad. And his unbookish jealousy must construe poor Cassio's smiles, gestures, and light behaviors quite in the wrong. How do you now, Lieutenant? <laughs> the worse, sir, that you give me the addition who want even kills me. I does Demona well, and you sure are on it. Now, the suit lay in Bianca's power. How quickly should you speed? <laughs> Alas, poor caitiff. Look how he laughs already. I never knew a woman love man so. Alas, poor rogue, I think in faith she loves me. <laughs> now he denies it faintly and laughs it out. You hear, Cassio? Now he importunes him to tell it all. Go to, well said, well said. Well, she gives it out that you shall marry her. Do you intend it? <laughs> Do you triumph, Roman? Do you triumph? Oh, I, I marry her. <laughs> what? No, uh, a customer. Pray thee, bear me some charity to my wit. Do not think it's so unwholesome. <laughs> oh. So, 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 so. They laugh that wins. Uh, ah, faith, the cry that goes that you marry her. <laughs> Pray thee, say true. I am a very villain else. Have you scorned me? Well. This is the monkey's own giving out. She is persuaded I will marry her out of her own love and flattery, not out of my promise. Iago beckons me. Now he begins the story. She was here even now. She haunts me in every place. I was the other day talking on the sea bank with certain Venetians, and thither comes the body, and by this hand falls me thus about my neck. Crying, oh dear Cassio, as it were, his gesture imports it. Oh, and, and she hangs and lulls and weeps upon me. So hauls and pulls me. <laughs> now he tells that you plucked him to my chamber. Oh, I see that is yours, but not the dog that I shall throw it to. Well, 
I must leave her company. Before me, look where she comes. Tis such another fetch you, marry a perfumed one. What do you mean by this haunting of me? Let the devil and his damn haunt you. What did you mean by that same handkerchief you gave me even now? It's a fine fool to take it. I must take out the work. A likely piece of work that you should find it in your chamber and know not who left it there? This is some minx token and I must take out the work there. Give it your hobby horse. Wheresoever you had it, I'll take out no work on it. Mm, how now, my sweet Bianca? How now, how now? By heaven, that should be my handkerchief. You come to supper tonight, you may. And you will not come when you are next prepared for. <laughs> after her, after her. Faith, I must. She'll rail in the she'll rail in the streets else. Will you sup there? Faith, I intend so. Well, I may chance to see you, for I would very fain speak with you. Prithee, come, will you? Go to, say no more. How shall I murder him, Iago? Did you perceive how he laughed at his vice? Oh, Iago. Did you see the handkerchief? Was that mine? Yours, by this hand. And to see how he prizes the foolish woman, your wife. She gave it him, and he had given it to his whore. I would have him nine years of killing. Oh, a fine woman, a fair woman, a sweet woman. Nay, you must forget that. I let her rot and perish and be damned tonight for she shall not live. No, my heart is turned to stone. I strike it and it hurts my hand. Oh, the world hath not a sweeter creature. She might lie by an emperor's side and command him tasks. Nay, hey, that's not your way. Hang her. I do but say what she is. Oh, delicate with a needle. An admirable musician. Oh, she will sing the savageness out of a bear. High and plenteous wit and invention. She, she, she's the worst for all this. Oh, a thousand, a thousand, thousand times. And then of so gentle a condition. Yeah, I too gentle. Nay, nay, sir. But yet the pity of it, Iago. Oh, Iago, the pity of it, Iago. If, if you are so fond over her iniquity, give her patent to offend. For if it touched not you, it comes near nobody. I will chop her into messes. Cuckold oh, me. Tis foul in her. With mine officer. That's fouler. Give me some poison, Iago. This night. I'll not expostulate with her. Let her body and beauty unprovide my mind again. This night, Iago. Do not. Do it not with poison. Strangle her in her bed. Even the bed she hath contaminated. Good. Good. The justice of it pleases. Very good. And for Cassio, let me be his undertaker. You shall hear more by midnight. Excellent. Good. The trumpet is that same. I warrant something from Venice. Ah, tis Lodovico. This comes from the Duke. See, your wife's with him. God save you, worthy general. With all my heart, sir. The Duke and Senators of Venice greet you. I kiss the instrument of their pleasures. And what's the news, good cousin Lodovico? Very glad to see you, senor. Welcome to Cyprus. I thank you. 
How does Lieutenant Cassio? Lives, sir. Nothing. There's fallen between him and my lord an unkind breach, but you shall make all well. Are you sure of that? My lord? Hmm? My lord. You do not as you will. Oh he, oh, he did not call. He's busy in the paper. Is there division twixt my lord and Cassio? Fire the most and unhappy brim. one. He would do much to tone them for the love I bear to Cassio. Fire and brimstone. My lord. Are you wise? What? Is he angry? It may be the letter moved him, for as I think they do command him home, deputing Cassio in his government. By my truth, I am glad on it. Indeed. My, my lord. I am glad to see you mad. Why, sweet a fellow? Devil! I have not deserved this. My lord, this would not be believed in Venice, though I should swear I saw it. Tis very much make her amends. She weeps. Oh, devil, devil. If that the earth could teem with women's tears, each drop she falls would prove a crocodile. Out of my sight. I will not stay to offend you. Truly, an obedient lady, I do beseech your lordship, call her back. Mistress? My lord. What would you have with her, sir? Do I, my lord? I, you did wish that I would make her turn. Sir, she can turn and turn. And yet go on and turn again, and she can weep, sir. Weep. She's very obedient, as you say, sir. Obedient. Very obedient. Proceed you in your tears concerning this, sir. Oh, well painted passion. I am commanded home. Get you away. I'll send for you anon. <clears throat> sir. I obey the mandate and will return to Venice. Hint of haunt. Cassio shall have my place. And sir, tonight I do entreat that we may sup together. You are welcome, sir, to Cyprus. Coats and monkeys. Is, is this the noble Moor whom our full senate call all in all sufficient? Is this the nature whom passion could not shake, whose solid virtue the shot of accident nor dart of chance could neither gaze nor pierce? He is much changed. Are his wits safe? Is he not light of brain? He's that, he is. <laughs> I may not breathe my censure what he might be. If what he might, he is not, I would to heaven he were. What? Strike his wife? Faith, that was not so well. Yet would I knew that stroke would prove the worst. Is it his use? Or did the letters work upon his blood and new create this fault? Oh, that's the last. It is not honesty in me to speak what I have seen and known. You shall observe him and his own courses will denote him so that I may save my speech. Do, but go after and mark how he continues. I am sorry that I am deceived in him. You have seen nothing then? Nor ever heard, nor ever did suspect. Yes. You have seen Cassio and she together. 
But then I saw no harm, and then I heard each syllable that breath made up between them. What, did they never whisper? Never, my lord. Nor send you out of the way? Never. To fetch her fan, her gloves, her mask, nor nothing. Never, my lord. That's strange. I durst, my lord, to wager she is honest. Lay down my soul at stake. If you think other, remove your thought. It doth abuse your bosom. If any wretch were to put this thought in your head, let heaven requite it with serpent's curse. For if she be not honest, chaste, and true, there's no man happy. The purest of their wives is foul as slander. She says enough. Yet she's a simple bog that can say as much. This is a subtle whore, a closet lock and key of villainous secrets. And yet she'll kneel and pray. I've seen her do it. My lord, what is your will? Pray you, Chuck, come hither. What is your pleasure? Let me see your eyes. Look in my face. What horrible fancy is this? Some of your function, mistress. Leave procreants alone. Shut the door. Cough or cry him if anybody come. Your mystery, your mystery, nay, dispatch. On my knee, what doth your speech import? I understand a fury in your words, but not the words. Well, what art thou? Your wife, my lord, your true and loyal wife. Come, swear it, damn thyself. Lest being like one of heaven, the devils themselves should fear to seize thee. Therefore be double damned. Swear thou art honest. Heaven doth truly know it. Heaven truly knows that thou art false as hell. To whom, my lord, with whom, how am I false? Ah, Desdemon, away, away, away. Alas, the heavy day. Why do you weep? Am I the motive of these tears, my lord? If only you, my father, do suspect an instrument of this you're calling back, lay not your blame on me. If you have lost him, why, I have lost him too. Had it pleased heaven to try me with affliction? Had they rained all kind of sores and shames on my bare head, steeped me in poverty to the very lips. Given to captivity, me and my utmost hopes, I should have found in some place of my soul a drop of patience. Well, that's to make me the fixed figure for the time of scorn to point his slow, unmoving finger at. Yet I could do that too. Well, very well. But there, where I have garnered up my heart, where either I must live or bear no life, the fountain from the which my current runs or else dries up to be discarded thence or keep it as a cistern for foul toads to not engender in. Turn that complexion there, patience, thou young and rose-lipped cherubin, I here look grim as hell. I hope my noble lord esteems me honest. Oh, I as summer flies are in the shambles that quicken even with blowing. Oh, thou weed, who art so lovely fair, 
and smells so sweet that the sense aches at thee. What thou hast never been born? Lars, what ignorant sin have I committed? Was this fair paper, this most goodly book made to write whore upon? What committed? 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 Oh, thou public commoner, I should make very forges of my cheeks that would the cinders burn up modesty. But did I but speak thy deeds? What committed? Heaven stops the nose at it, and the moon winks. The body wind that kisses all at me is hush within the hollow of mine earth and will not hear it. What committed? Impudent strumpet. By heaven, you do me wrong. Are you not a strumpet? No, as I am a Christian. If I preserve this vessel for my Lord from any other foul, unlawful touch, be not to be a strumpet, I am none. What, not a whore? No, as I shall be saved. Is it possible? You forgive us. I cry you mercy then. That took you for that cunning whore of Venice that married with the fellow. You, mistress, <laughs> that have the office opposite of St. Peter and keep the gates of hell. You, you, I, you, we have done our course. There is money for thy pain. I pray you, turn the key and keep our counsel. Alas, what does this gentleman conceive? How do you, madam? How, how do you, my good lady? Not to sleep. Good madam, what is the matter with my lord? With who? What, what, with my lord, madam. Who is thy lord? He that is yours, sweet lady. I have none. <laughs> Do not talk to me, Amelia. I, I cannot weep, nor answers have I none, but which should go by water. Prithee. Night. Lay on my bed my wedding sheets. Remember. And call thy husband hither. Here's a change indeed. Neat. I should be used to a very neat. How have I behaved that he might stick the smallest opinion on my least misuse? Oh, it is your pleasure, madam. How is it with you? I cannot tell. Those that do teach young babes do it with a gentle means and easy task. He might have chid me so, for in good faith, I am a child to fighting. What is the matter, lady? Alas, Iago, my lord, hath so behoard her thrown such despite and heavy terms upon her that true hearts cannot bear it. Am I that name, Iago? What name, fair lady? Such as he said my lord did say I was. He called her whore. A beggar in his drink could not have laid such terms upon his callet. Why did he so? I do not know. I am sure. I am none such. Do not weep. Do not weep. Oh, last the day. As she forsook so many noble matches, her father and her country and her friends, to be called whore, would you not make one weep? It is my wretched fortune. Beshrew him for it. How comes this trick upon him? Nay. Heaven doth know. I will be hanged if some eternal villain, some busy and insinuating rogue, some cogging 
cozening slave to get some office hath not devised this slander. I will be hanged else. Hi, there is no such man. It is impossible. Any such there be. Heaven pardon. A halter pardon him. Oh, hell gnaw his bones. Why should he call her whore? Who keeps her company? What place? What time? What form? What likelihood? The Moors abused by some most villainous knave, some base, notorious knave, some scurvy fellow. Oh, heaven, that such companions thou dost unfold and, and put in every honest hand a whip to lash the rascals naked through the world, even from the east to the west. Speak with Endor. Oh, fie upon them. Some such squire he was that turned your wit the seamy side without and made you, you, suspect me with the more. You are a fool. Go to. Alas, Iodho, what shall I do to win my lord again? Good friend, go to him. For by this light of heaven, I, I know not how I lost him. Here I kneel. If e'er my will did trespass against his love, either in discourse or actual deed, or that mine eyes, mine ears, or any sense delighted them in any other form, or that I do not yet and ever did and ever will, will he do shake me off to beggarly divorcement, love him dearly. Spare me. Unkindness may do much, and his unkindness may defeat my life, but never paint my love. I cannot say. Poor. It does abhor me now. I speak the word. To do the act that might the addition herb. Not the world's mass of vanities could make me. I pray you, be content. Tis but his humor. The business of the state does him offense, and he does chide with you. If it were no other. It is but so, I warrant. Hark how these instruments summon to supper. The messengers of Venice stays the meat. Go in. And weep not, all things shall be well. <sighs> How now, Rodrigo? I do not find that thou deals justly with me. What? In the contrary? Every day thou dost daft me with some device, Iago, and rather as it seems to me now, keeps from me all conveniency then supplies me with the least advantage of hope. I will indeed no longer endure it, nor am I yet persuaded to put up in peace what already I have foolishly suffered. Will you hear me, Roderigo? Ah, faith, I have heard too much for your words and performances are no kin together. You charge me unjustly. With naught but truth, I have wasted myself out of my means. The jewels you have had for me to deliver Desdemona would have half corrupted a votarist. You have told me she hath received them and returned me expectations and comforts of sudden respect and acquaintance, but I find none. Well, go to. Very well. Very well. Yeah. Go to. I cannot go to, man. Nor tis not very well. By this hand, I think it's scurvy and begin to find myself fopped in it. Very well. Um, I tell you, it's not very well. I will make myself known to Desdemona. If she will return my jewels, I will give over my suit and repent my unlawful solicitation. If not, 
Assure yourself I will seek satisfaction of you. Oh, you have said now. I had said nothing but what I protest intentment of doing. Now I see there's metal in thee. And even from this instant, do build on thee a better opinion than ever before. Give me thy hand, Roderigo. Thou hast taken against me a most just accept exception. But yet, yet, yet I protest I have dealt most directly in thy affair. It has not appeared. Well, yeah, I grant it hath not appeared. And your suspicion is not with wit and judgment, but Roderigo. If thou hast that in thee indeed, which I have greater reason to believe now than ever, I mean purpose, courage, and valor, this night show it. If thou the next night following enjoy not Desdemona, take me from this world with treachery and device engines for my life. Well, what is it? Is it within reason and compass? Sir, there is a special commission come from Venice to depute Cassio in Othello's place. Is that true? Mm -hmm. What well, did Othello and Desdemona return again to Venice? Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. He goes to Maritiana and taketh away with him the fair Desdemona, unless his abode be lingered here by some accident, wherein none can be so determinant as the removing of Cassio. How do you mean removing him? Why, by making him incapable of Othello's place. Knocking out his brains. And that you would have me do? Aye, if you dare do yourself a profit and a right. He sups tonight with his harlotry, and thither will I go to him. He knows not yet of his honorable fortune. If you will watch his going thence, which I will fashion to fall out between 12 and 1, you may take him at your pleasure. I will be near to second your attempt, and he shall fall between us. Come, stand, not amazed at it, but go along with me. I will show you such a necessity in his death that you shall think yourself bound to put him on it. It is now high to supper time, and the right night grows to waste. About it. I will hear further reason for this. And you shall be satisfied. <laughs> I do beseech you, sir. Trouble yourself no further. I'll uh, pardon me. It'll do me good to walk. Madam, good night. I humbly thank your ladyship. Your honor is most welcome. <laughs> Will you walk, sir? Oh, Desdemona. My lord. Get you to bed on the instant. I'll be returned forthwith. Dismiss your attendant there. Look it be done. I will. My lord. How goes it now? Well, he looks gentler than he did. He says he will return incontinent and hath commanded me to go to bed and bid me to dismiss you. Dismiss me? It was his bidding. Therefore, good Amelia, give me my knightly wearing, and adieu. We must not now displease him. I would you had never seen him. 
would not I? My love doth so approve him that even his stubbornness, his checks, his frowns, pretty on pin me, have grace and faith, favor in them. I have laid those sheets you bade me on the bed. <laughs> All's one. <laughs> okay. How foolish are our minds. If I do die before thee, prithee, shroud me in one of those same sheets. Come, come, you talk. My mother had a maid called Barbary. She was in love, and he she loved proved mad and did forsake her. She had a song of willow, an old thing twas, but it expressed her fortune, and she died singing it. <laughs> That song tonight will not go from my mind. I have much to do, but to go hang my head all at one side and sing it like poor Barbary. For the dispatch? Shall I go fetch your nightgown? No, unpin me here. This uh, Lodovico is a proper man. <laughs> Very handsome man. He speaks well. I know a lady in Venice would have walked barefoot to Palestine for a touch of his nether lip. <laughs> <laughs> the poor soul sat sighing by a sycamore tree, seeing all the green willow. Her hand on her bosom, her head on her knee, Sing willow, willow, willow. The fresh streams ran by her and murmured her moans. Sing willow, willow, willow. Her salt tears fell from her and softened the snows. Sing willow, lay by these, willow. Willow. Pretty. Hi, thee. I'll come anon. Sing all the green willow must be my garland. Let nobody blame him with his scorn. I approve. Nay, <laughs> that's not next. Hark. Who is that knocks? It's the wind. I called my love false love, but what said he then? Sing willow, willow, willow. Can I court with more women? With more men. So get thee gone. Good night. Mine eyes do itch. Does that bode weeping? Tis high, neither here nor there. I have heard it said so. Oh, these men, these men. <sighs> Dost thou in conscience think, tell me, Amelia, that there be women who do abuse their husbands in such gross kind? There be some such, no question. But thou do such deed for all the world? Why would not you? No, by this heavenly light. <laughs> oh, nor I, never by this heavenly light. I, I might do, as, do it as well in uh, the dark. What? You do such a deed for all the world. Mm, the world's a huge thing. It is a great price for a small vice. The truth. I think thou wouldst not. Oh, by my troth, I think I should, and undo it when I had done it. Mary. Okay, I, I would not do such a thing for a joint ring, nor for measures of lawn, nor for gowns, petticoats, nor, nor caps, nor any petty exhibition. But... For the whole world? That's pity who would 
not make her husband a cuckold to make him a monarch. I should venture purgatory for it. Beshrew me if I would do such a wrong for the whole world. Why, the wrong is but a wrong of the world, and having the world for your labor, tis a wrong in your own world, and you might quickly make it right. I do not think there is any such woman. Oh, yea, a dozen, and as many to the advantage as would store the world they played for. But I do think it is their husbands' faults if wives do fall. Say that they slack their duties and pour our treasures into foreign laps, or else break out into peevish jealousies, throwing restraint upon us. Hmm? Or say they, they strike us, or scant our former having in despite. Why, we have galls, and though we have some grace, yet we have some revenge. Let husbands know their wives have sense like them. They see and smell and have their palates both for sweet and sour as husbands have. What is it that they do when they change us for others? Is it sport? I think it is. And doth affection breed it? I think it doth. Is frailty that thus errs, it is so too. And have not we affections, desires for sport, and frailty as men have? Hmm? Then let them use us well, else let them know the ills we do, their ills instruct us so. Good night. Night. God muses. Stand. Not to pick bad from bad, but by bad, mend. Here, stand behind this bulk straight. Will he come? Wear thy good rapier bare and put it home. Quick, quick, fear nothing. I'll be at thy elbow. It makes us or it mars us. Think on that and fix most firm thy resolution. Be he near at hand, I am a miscarriant. Here, at thy hand, be bold, and take thy stand. I have no great devotion to the deed, and yet he hath given me satisfying reasons. Tis but a man gone, forth my sword, he dies. I have rubbed this young quad almost to the sense, and he grows angry. Now, whether he kill Cassio, or Cassio him, or each do kill the other, every way makes my game. Live Roderigo, he calls me to a restitution large of gold and jewels that I bob from him as gifts to Desdemona. Must not be. If Cassio do remain, he hath a daily beauty in his life that makes me ugly. And besides, the more may unfold me to him. There I stand. There stand I in much peril. No, he must die. Be it so, I hear him coming. I know his gate, tis he. Villain down, dies. That thrust has been mine enemy indeed, but that my coat is better than thou knowest. I will make proof of thine. Ah! Oh, I am slain. I am named. Forever, help! Oh, murder! Murder! The voice of Cassio. Iago keeps his word. Oh, villain that I am. It is even so. Oh, help! Oh, light, a surgeon! Tis he. Oh, brave Iago, honest and just, that has such noble sense of thy friend's wrong. Thou teaches me. 
Minion, your dear lies dead, and your unblessed fate hies. Strumpet, I come. Forth of my heart those charms, thine eyes are blotted. Thy bed, lust stained, shall with lust's blood be spotted. What ho? No watch, no passage? Murder, murder! There's some mischance, the voice is very direful. Oh, help! Hark! Oh, wretched villain! Two or three grown to heavy night. These may be counterfeits. Let's think it unsafe to come into the cry without more help. Nobody come, and shall I bleed to death? Hark! Here's one comes in his shirt with light and weapons. There! Whose noise is this that cries on murder? I do not know. Did you not hear a cry? Here! Here, for heaven's sake, help me! What's the matter? This is Othello's ancient, as I take it. Uh, same indeed, a very valiant fellow. Why do you hear the cry so grievously? Iago! Uh, oh, I am spoiled, undone by villains. Give me some help. <gasps> me, Lieutenant, what villains have done this? I, I think that, that one of them is hereabout and cannot make way. Oh, treacherous villains! What are you there? Come in, give some help! Oh, help me there! Uh, that, that's one of them! Oh, murderous slave, old villain! I am Diago. Oh, you man of the dark. Inhuman dog. You man of the dark, where be these bloody thieves? How silent is this town? Oh, murder! Murder! What may you be? Are you good or evil? You shall prove us, praise us. Signor Lodovico! He, sir. I cry you mercy. Here is Cassio, hurt by villains. Cassio? How is it, brother? My leg is cut in two. Oh, Mary, heaven forbid. Like, gentlemen, I'll bind it with my shirt. What is the matter, ho? Whose is that cried? Who is it that cried? Oh, my dear Cassio. My sweet Cassio. 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 Oh, noble strumpet. Cassio, may you suspect who they should be that thus mangled you? No. I'm sorry to find you thus. I have been to seek you. Lend me a garter. So, oh, for a chair, to bear him easily hence. As he faints, Cassio, Cassio, Cassio. Gentlemen, gentlemen all, I, I do suspect this trash to be party in this injury. Patience a while, good Cassio. Come, 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 Get, lend me a light. No way this face or no. Alas, my friend and my dear countrymen. Rodrigo! <gasps> no! <gasps> yes! <gasps> sure! Oh, heaven, Rodrigo! What a Venice! Oh, even, even he, sir, did you know him? Know him, I. Signor Gradiano! I cry your gentle pardon, these bloody accidents must excuse my manners that so neglected you. I am glad to see you. How do you, Cassio? Chair! Chair! Roderigo! He, 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 he! Oh, that's well. The chair. Some good man, bear him carefully from hence. I'll fetch the surgeon, sur general surgeon. For you, mistress, uh, save you your labor. He that lies slain here, Cassio, was my dear friend. What malice was between you? None in the world, nor do I know the man. Wait, look you pale. Bear him out of the air. Oh, stay you, good gentleman. Look you pale, mistress. Do you perceive the ghastness of her eye? Nay, and you stare. We shall hear more anon. Behold her well. I pray you look upon her. Do you see, gentlemen? Nay, guiltiness will speak, though tongues were out of use. Alas, what is the matter? 
What is the matter, husband? Cassio hath been set on in the dark by Rodrigo, and fellows that are escaped. Uh, I, he's almost slain, and Rodrigo is quite dead. Alas, good gentlemen. Oh, last good Cassio. Is the fruits of whoring. Prithee, Amelia, go know of uh, Cassio where he supped tonight. What, do you shake at that? Supped at my house, but I therefore shake not. Oh, did he so? I charge you, go with me. Oh, fie upon thee, strumpet. I am no strumpet, but of life as honest as you that thus abuse me. As I, oh, fie upon thee. Kind gentlemen, let's go see poor Cassio dressed. Come, mistress, you must tell another tale. Meal you, run you to the citadel and tell my lord and lady what hath happened. Will you go on a four? Oh, this is the night that either makes me or fordoes me, or does me quite. It is the cause. It is the cause, my soul. Let me not name it to you, you chaste stars, but it is the cause. Yet I'll not shed her blood. Nor star that whiter skin of hers than snow and smooth as monumental alabaster. Yet she must die, else she'll betray more men. Put out the light. And then put out the light. But if I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can again thy former light restore, should I repent. But once put out thy light, thou cunningest pattern of excelling nature. I know not where is that Promethean heat that can thy light relume. When I have plucked thy rose, I cannot give it vital growth again. Your needs must wither. I'll smell it on the tree. Mm. Oh, pull me breath. That dost almost persuade justice to break her sword. One more. Mm. One more. Mm. Oh, be thus when thou art dead, and I shall kill thee and love thee after. One more. Mm. And that's the last. <laughs> so sweet was ne'er so fatal. I must weep, but they are cruel tears. This sorrow's heavenly, it strikes where it doth love. She wakes. Who's there? The fellow. Aye, Desdemona. Will you come to bed, my lord? Have you prayed tonight, Desdemona? Aye. My lord. If you bethink yourself of any crime unreconciled as yet to heaven and grace, solicit for it straight. Alack, my lord. What may you mean by that? We'll do it and be brief. I will walk by. I would not kill thy unprepared. I would not kill this. Talk you of killing. I, I do. Then heaven have mercy on me. <laughs> Amen. With all my heart. If you say so, I hope you will not kill me. Hmm. And yet, I fear you. For your fatal then when your eyes roll so. Why I should fear, I know not, since guiltiness, I know not. But yet I feel fear. 
think on thy sins. They are loves I bear to you. Die, and for that thou diest. That death's unnatural that kills for loving. Why gnaw you so your nether lip? Some bloody passion shakes your very frame. These are portents, but yet I hope, I hope, they do not point on me. Peace and be still. I will so. What's the matter? That handkerchief, which I so loved and gave to thee, thou gavest to Cassio. No, by my life and soul, I send for the man and ask him. Sweet soul, take heed. <clears throat> take heed of perjury. Thou art on thy deathbed. I, but not yet to die. Yes, presently. Therefore, confess thee freely of thy sin. For to deny each article with oath cannot remove nor choke the strong conception that I do groan with all. Thou art to die. Lord, have mercy on me. I say amen. And you have mercy too. I never did offend you in my life, never loved Cassio, but with such general warranty of heaven as I might love, I never gave him token. By heaven, I saw my handkerchief in his hand. Oh, perjured woman. Thou dost stone my heart and makes me call what I intend to do a murder, which I thought a sacrifice. I saw the handkerchief. He found it then. I never gave it to him. Send for him hither. Let him confess a truth. He hath confessed it. My lord? That he hath used thee. Allah. I. He will not say so. No. His mouth is stopped. Honest Iago hath taken order for it. We fear interpret. Is he dead? Had all his hairs been lives, my great revenge had stomach for them all. He is betrayed and I undone. Out, strumpet! Weeps thou to him for my face. Banish me, my lord, but kill me not. Down, strumpet. Kill me tomorrow, let me live tonight. Nay, if you strive. But half an hour. Being done, there is no pause. Why say but one prayer? It is too late. My lord! My lord, what ho! My lord! My lord! What noise is this? What, not dead? Not quite dead? I that am cruel and yet merciful, I would not have thee linger in thy pain. So, no. What ho, my lord? Who's there? Oh, good, my lord, I would speak a word with you. Yes. This is Amelia. <laughs> by and by. She's dead. Tis like to come, she, she comes to speak of Cassio's death. The noise was high. No more moving. Still as the grave. Shall she come in? What's good to do? I think she stirs again. No, no, no. What, what, what's best to do? What's best to do? If she come, if she come in, she'll sure speak to my wife. My wife. My wife. I have no wife. Oh, it's supportable. Oh, heavy hour. 
He thinks it should be now a huge eclipse of sun and moon and that the affrighted globe did yawn at alteration. I do beseech you that I may speak with you. Oh, good my lord. I had forgot thee. Oh. Come in, Amelia. I've soft by and by. Let me the curtains draw. Where art thou? What's the matter with thee now? Oh, my good lord, yonder's foul murder's done. What now? But now, my lord. This is the very error of the moon. She comes more near earth than she was once and makes men mad. Cassio, my lord, hath killed a young Venetian called Rodrigo. Rodrigo killed? And Cassio killed? No, Cassio is not killed. Not Cassio killed? The murder's out of tune, and sweet revenge grows harsh. Falsely murdered. Oh, Lord, what cry is that? Uh, what? Out. Out, and alas, that was my lady's voice. Help! Help! Oh, help! Oh! Lady, speak again, sweet. Desdemona, sweet. Mistress, oh, speak. Speak. A guiltless death, I die. Oh! Oh, who left on this deed? Nobody, I myself, my kind lord, farewell. <laughs> By how should she be murdered? Alas, who knows? You heard her say herself, it was not I. You think so? I must needs report the truth. She's like a liar gone to burning hell. T'was I that killed her. Oh, the more angels she, and you the blacker devil. She turned to folly, and she was a whore. Thou dost belie her, and thou art a devil. She was false as water. Thou art rash as fire to say that she was false. Oh, she was heavenly true. Cassio did top her. Ask thy husband else. Oh, I were damned beneath all depth and hell, but that I did process above, proceed upon just grounds to this extremity. Thy husband knew it all. My husband. Thy husband. But she was false to wedlock. Aye, with Cassio. Now, had she been true, if heaven would make such another world of one entire and perfect crystallite, I'd not have sold her for it. My husband. Aye, t'was he that told me on her first. An honest man he is and hates the slime that sticks on filthy deeds. My husband. What needs this iterance, woman? I say thy husband. Oh, mistress. Villainy hath made mocks with love. My husband says she was false. Woman, I say thy husband. My friend, thy husband. Does I understand the word? My friend, thy husband. Honest, honest Iago. If he say so, may his pernicious soul rot half a grain a day. He lies to the heart. She was too fond of her most Healthy bargain. Huh? Do thy worst. This deed of thine is no more worthy in heaven than thou wast worthy her. Peace, you were best. Thou hast not half the power to do me harm, as I have to be hurt. Oh, gull! Oh, dolt as ignorant as dirt thou hast done a deed! I care not for thy sword. I'll make thee known, though I lost twenty lives. Help! Help! Oh, help! The more I have killed my mistress! Murder! Murder! What is the matter? How now, General? Oh, are you come, Iago? You have done well. The men must lay their murders on your neck. What is the matter? 
disprove this villain if thou beest a man. He says thou dost told him that his wife was false. I know thou didst not. Thou art not such a villain. Speak, for my heart is full. I told him what I thought and told no more than what he found himself was apt and true. But did you ever tell him that she was false? I did. <sighs> you told a lie. An odious, damned lie upon my soul. A lie, a wicked lie. She false with Cassio. Did you say with Cassio? With Cassio, mistress? Oh, How to charm your tongue. I will not charm my tongue. I am bound to speak. My mistress here lies murdered in her bed. Oh, heavens, forfend! Your report, reports have set the murder on. Hey, stir not, masters. It is true indeed. It is a strange truth. Oh, monstrous act. Villainy. 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 I think upon it. I think. I smell it. Oh, villainy. I thought so then. I kill myself for grief. Oh, villainy. Villainy. God, are you mad? I charge you. Get you home. Good gentlemen. Let me have leave to speak. Tis proper I obey him, but not now. Perchance, Iago, I will ne'er go home. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, nay. Lay thee down and roar. For thou hast killed the sweetest innocent that e'er did lips up I. Oh, she was foul. I scarce did know you, uncle. There lies your niece, whose breath, indeed, these hands have newly stopped. I know what this act shows horrible and grim. Poor Desdemon, I am glad thy father's dead, thy mattress mortal to him, and pure grief. Sure, his old thread in twain. Did he live now? This sight would make him do a desperate turn. Yea, curse his better angel from his side and fall to a reprobance. Tis pitiful. But yet Iago knows that she, the act of shame, a thou that she with Cassio had the act of shame a thousand times committed. Cassio confessed it. And she did gratify his amorous works with that recognizance and pledge of love which I first gave her. I saw it in his hand. It was a handkerchief. An antique token my father gave my mother. Oh, God! Oh, heavenly God! Soon talk of peace. Dwell out. Dwell out, I. Peace. No. I will speak as liberal as the North. Let heaven and men and devils let them all, all, all cry shame against me, yet I'll speak. Be wise and get you home. I will not. Hi, your sword upon a woman? Oh, thou dull more. That handkerchief thou speak stuff. I found by fortune, and did give my husband, for often with a solemn earnestness, more than indeed belonged to such a trifle, he begged of me to steal it. Illness war! She give it Cassia. <laughs> no. <laughs> Alas, I found it, and I did give it my husband. Thou liest! By heaven, I do not. I do not, gentlemen. Oh, murderous coxcomb, what should such a fool do with such a good wife? Are there no stones in heaven but what serves for the thunder? Precious villain! Fall! <laughs> oh, sure, he hath killed his wife! I... I... Oh, leave me by my mistress, son. <laughs> He's 
gone, but his wife killed. Tis a notorious villain. <laughs> Take you this weapon, which I have here recovered from the moor. Come, guard the door without. Let him not pass, but kill him rather. I'll go after that same villain, for tis a damned slave. <laughs> I am not valiant, neither. But every puny whipster gets my sword. But why should honor outlive honesty? Let it go all. What oh, did thy song bow, lady? Oh, canst thou hear me? I will play the swan and die in music. Willow, willow. Willow, <laughs> oh, more she was chaste. She loved thee cruel more. So come my soul to bliss as I speak true. So speaking as I think, alas, I die. I have a moment. It was a sword of Spain, the ice broke's temper. Oh, here it is. <sighs> Uncle, I must come forth. If thou attempt it, it will cost thee dear. Thou hast no weapon, and perforce must suffer. Look in upon me then, and speak with me. Or naked as I am, I will assault thee. What is the matter? Behold, I have a weapon. The better never did itself sustain upon a soldier's thigh. I have seen the day that with this little arm and this good sword, I have made my way through more impediments than 20 times your stop. <laughs> oh, vain boast. Who can control his fate? It is not so now. Be not afraid, though you see me weaponed. Here is my journey's end. Here is my butt and very sea mark of my utmost sail. Do you go back dismayed? It is a lost fear. Man, but a rush against the fellow's breast, and he retires. <laughs> Where should a fellow go? Now, how does that look now? <laughs> oh, ill starred wrench, pale as thy smock. <laughs> when we shall meet at comps, this look of thine will hurl my soul from heaven, and fiends will snatch at it. <laughs> Cold. cold, cold, my girl, even like thy chastity. Oh, cursed, cursed slave! What be ye devil from the possession of this heavenly sight? Blow me about in winds, roast me in sulfur, wash me in steep down gulfs of liquid fire. <laughs> <laughs> Where is this rash and most unfortunate man? <laughs> it's he that was a fellow. Here I am. Where is that viper? Bring the villain forth. I look down toward his feet, but that's a fable. <laughs> if thou be a devil, I cannot kill thee. <laughs> Winch me the sword from him. I bleed, sir, but not killed. I am not sorry, neither. I have thee live. For in my sense, tis happiness to die. Othello, oh, Othello, there was one so good fallen in the practice of a damned slave. What shall be said to thee? 
Anyway, anything? An honorable murderer, if you will? For not I didn't hate, but all, all in honor. This wretch hath part confessed his villainy. Did you and he consent in Cassio's death? Aye. Dear General, I never gave you cause. I do believe it. But I ask you your pardon. <sighs> Will you, I pray, demand that dimmy devil why he hath thus ensnared my soul and body? Demand me nothing. What you know, you know. From this time forth, I never will speak word. What? Not to pray. Torments will up your lips. Well, thou dost best. Sir, you shall understand what hath befallen, which as I think, you know not. Here is a letter found in the pocket of the slain Rodrigo. And here another. The one of them imports the death of Cassio to be undertook by Rodrigo. Oh, oh villain. Most heathernit and most gross. Now here's another discontented paper found in his pocket too, and that it seems Rodrigo meant to have this sent this damned villain, but that but like Iago in the Nick came in and satisfied him. Oh, thou pernicious caitor. How came you, Cassio, by that handkerchief that was my wife's? I found it in my chamber, and he himself confessed it, but even now that there he dropped it for special purposes which wrought to his desire. Oh. There's the sides in Rodrigo's letter how he upbraids Iago that he made him brave me upon the watch whereon it came that I was cast and even but now he spake after long screaming dead Iago hurt him Iago set him on you must forsake this room and go with us. Your power and your command is taken off and Cassio rules in Cyprus. For this slave, if there be any cunning cruelty that can torment him much and hold him long, it shall be his. You shall close prisoner rest till that nature of your fault be known to the Venetian state. Come. Bring away. Soft you. A word or two before you go. I have done the state some service and they know it. No more of that. I pray you in your letters when you these unlucky deeds relate speak of me as I am. Nothing extenuate nor set down aught in malice. Then you must speak of one who loves not wisely, but too well. Of one not easily jealous, but being wrought, perplexed in the extreme. Of one whose hand, like the base Indian, threw a pearl away richer than all his tribe. Of one whose subdued eyes, albeit unused to the melting mood, drop tears as fast as the Arabian trees their medicinal gum. Set you down this. And say besides, that in Aleppo once, where a malignant and a turbaned Turk beat a Venetian and traduced the state, I took by the throat, the uncircumcised dog, and smote him thus. 
<laughs> oh, bloody period. Oh, the, the smoke is marred. <laughs> I kissed me. There I killed me. No way but this. Killing myself to die upon a kid. This did I fear. The thought he had no weapon. For he was great of heart. Oh, Spartan dog, more fell than anguish, hunger, or the sea. Look, look on the tragic loading of this bed. This is thy work. The object poisoned sight, let it be hid. Graciano, keep the house and seize upon the fortunes of the moor, for they succeed on you. To you, Lord, governor remains the censure of this hellish villain. The time, the place, the torture. Oh, enforce it. Myself will straight abroad and to the state this heavy act with heavy heart relate. Come on back, everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening for Othello. Such a funny play. <laughs> uh, we will see you back here uh, a week from tonight with a new play. We are down to our final eight. So make sure that uh, if you've missed any, you can go back and visit our YouTube page or um, see them on Facebook. But come on back next week for live.